Chapter 2051 Blowing up a planet with one hand You are Hansen, the Shura Queen asked when she saw Hansen without armor. She recognized him. She remembered Hansen because he was important in the Alliance. Plus, Hansen had a blood relation to the Luo family. He was a distant relative of the Jade Shura. Hansen laughed, but he did not speak. Jade Minger stepped aside. She really hated them both. Hansen and Bawa had treated her like a maid, and she had to do everything they had told her to do, even if she didn't want to. The Shura Queen nodded at Jade Minger, then ignored her. She turned back to Han Sr. You are not the master of the Bone Dagger. It should belong to the Shura. Shura Queen remembered that it was a Shura woman who had used the Bone Dagger in the Shura Palace. No one could stop her. She used falsified sky powers in their full form. The strangest thing was when that woman gave the Shura Queen the falsified Sky Sutra. It allowed the Jade Shura to finish her skill, and in doing so, she became much stronger. Jade Shura had originally thought it was God that had given them the rest of the skill, but now, she did not think so. Does it matter if I am or not? You just need to know that I can destroy the Shura, Hansen said. Why should I believe you? The Shura Queen asked quietly. You came here, didn't you? That means you already believe me. Hansen smiled, and he then went on to say, the Battle of Franco, the assault on Heilmans, the strike on 4690, they can flip the situation of the Shura on its head. Can you actually sort out these problems? It's you. The Shura Queen couldn't believe it, and she stared at Hans Senator. The things Hansen had spoken about were incidents that could lead to the potential collapse of Shura society. They hadn't happened, but if the Alliance took action in the right way, the Shura would lose. They had survived so far because of the help they had received. Why are you doing this? You are just a human. The Shura Queen could not believe all of this was coming from Han Senator. It did not make sense. Hansen laughed and looked at the Shura Queen and said, In your eyes, this universe is everything. But to me, the Shura and the humans are just toys. I like the Alliance more, but I don't want to see the Shura get destroyed, either. The Shura Queen looked at Han Senator. She could not accept this explanation. How about this? The Shura are still useful to me, and we need you to keep going, Hansen said. What do you want me to do? I won't sell the Shura out, the Shura Queen said with certainty. I need you to send some Shura out to do work for me, but that will come after. Right now, I need you to take me to the Shura King gravesite. Hansen planned to use the Shura as spies in the future, allowing them to go to the demon so he could learn more about them. This job was perfect for the Shura. If Hansen had the whole Shura empire under his thumb, he wouldn't be afraid of the Shura doing anything to the demon. Impossible. Even if you kill me, the Shura queen said immediately. Hansen did not say anything. He turned on a video and showed the feed coming from a Shura base. It was Planet Cardola. This is a beautiful planet. Hansen looked at Planet Cardola. From space, the planet appeared orange and green. It was exceptionally beautiful. The Shura Queen did not speak. An important military planet like that should not have been spied on so closely. She thought Hansen was threatening her, showing her that he could do anything. The Shura Queen believed Hansen was too naive and the threat did not work on her. I suggest you take one last look at it. You might not see it again, Hansen said to the Shura Queen. If you want to threaten me, you are wrong to think you can, the Shura Queen said impassively. She didn't think it would be a big deal if Hansen sent someone to that planet. It was too well defended. Hansen smiled and did not speak. He lifted a hand and clenched it into a fist. The Shura Queen and Jade Mingo did not know what he meant to do by that. In the video, Planet Cordola was suddenly crushed by something. It just imploded, then billowed out as a cloud of dust. The Shura Queen and Jade Minger were utterly speechless. Jade Minger looked at Han Sen and said, Do you think this broken trick can fool us? The Shura Queen thought the same same. There was no way that Han Sen could destroy a planet by simply moving his hand. There was no power like that in the universe. He'd have to be a god. Han Sen did not explain. He told the Shura Queen, you can use the phone. The Shura Queen started to look concerned. She picked up the phone and dialed the number. Not long after, the phone fell to the ground. She started to shake in her boots, and she looked at Hansen without being able to muster a single word. Jade Mingo was smart. There was only one possible reason for her mother to behave like this. But even so, that possibility was difficult to believe. It cannot be you who did it. This must be some trick. The Shura Queen was no longer calm and composed. She racked her brain, 
trying to think of some power that could have destroyed Planet Cordola. Planet Cordola's weapon arsenal could fend off an entire army, though. It was impossible for anyone to blow it up in such a manner. Aside from God, the Shura Queen could not fathom any other possibilities. If you need me to, I can destroy more Shura planets. Perhaps after seeing a few more go, you will believe me, Hansen said quietly. When the Shura Queen and Jade Minger heard that, it felt like their hears were going to stop. Why must you go to the Shura King grave? The Shura Queen asked. She had no choice but to believe him. I am trying to confirm something. Don't worry, I am not interested in your Shura Kings. I won't disrespect their bodies, Hansen said. Let Jade Minger go, and I will go with you, the Shura Queen said, gritting her teeth. She had tried hard to hide her vulnerability, but now, what was the point? It doesn't matter where she is in this universe. I have some work for her to do, anyway. Hansen had no plans of letting her go. Chapter 2052 Shura Coffin The Shura King gravesite was above and beyond Hansen's expectations. The grave itself was a planet. It was a planet that could alter its orbit, too. The Shura had moved the planet to a system in the barrens of space. There were many other planets just like it, and if the Shura Queen had not taken Hansen there herself, he would never have guessed it to be the Shura King gravesite when he initially laid eyes on it. On the planet, a giant mountain opened up. It was the entrance to the graves. You needed an item to open it, and it was something that belonged only to the rulers of the Shura. Hansen walked into the gravesite without hesitation. On either side of him, there were statues depicting beasts. When he entered, the grave watcher beasts came alive. They opened their mouths, exhaling falsified sky powers. The strength they wielded was god glass by alliance standards. There were so many grave watcher beasts there, and they all used their falsified sky powers together. It was like fighting a thousand god class elites all at once. But before the scary power reached Hansen, it was warded off. The powers couldn't come closer than three meters from Han Senator, it was like there was an invisible shield protecting him. The Shura Queen and Jade Minger were in shock. That unbelievable power could not even touch Han Senator, it was hard to imagine. None of the tricks and traps of the gravesite worked on Han Senator, he didn't even ask them about the gravesite. He just kept on walking, without anything being able to stop him. The Shura Queen was hoping that the Shura King gravesite and its defenses would punish Han Senator, but now, she had no hope at all. Hansen was nothing short of a genuine god. Nothing was able to touch him, and no power could bring harm to his body. How can such power exist in this world? Jade Minga looked to be awestruck. She couldn't wrap her mind around it. She lost faith. She didn't think there was a point in practicing so hard. In front of Hansen, her strength was nothing. She was little more than an ant. I came here to lead. Stop touching the traps, the Shura Queen said. Walking past Hans Senator, if Hansen kept walking forward the way he was, all the traps and defenses would be triggered and broken. That would mean anyone could go in. With the Shura Queen leading, they soon reached the deeper recesses of the Royal Shura Grave site. There were many coffins, and each one of them belonged to a separate Shura King. The back of the hall contained a humanoid, Shura shaped coffin. The Shura coffin was standing atop an altar. In front of it, there was a pool that had long since dried up. There were some bottles next to it. Hansen recognized them as being the same as the bottle of mysterious Geno fluid. When my life ends, I will come here to die, the Shura queen said. Hansen observed the whole hall, and he noted how there was not a single tablet or slab of text. There was not a single written word anywhere. It was just a place that was home to a number of coffins. Is it really rare for a Shura King to sleep? Hansen opened his Dong Shen aura and gave the place a scan. This seemed to be the only grave site on the planet. Yes, it is only here, the Shura Queen answered. Hansen looked at the graves. There are 24 of them, but there have been more than 24 kings, right? The Shura Queen shook her head and said, I don't know. I only know what's written on the decree. This is the first time I have learned about the number of coffins here. Hansen used his mind to open the 24 coffins. Each coffin contained the body of Shura. Hansen, you said you would not destroy the bones of our ancestors. Jade Mingo shouted angrily. Hansen smiled darkly. These are not the bodies of Shura kings. What? Jade Mingo was frozen. The Shura have had more than 24 kings. If this was true, there should be more than 24 of them here. The coffins would all be filled up. 
There wouldn't be one left empty for your mom, at least. Hansen looked at the humanoid-shaped coffin atop the altar. Hansen walked up to the altar and opened the coffin. He couldn't use his mind to scan that coffin, so he was curious what material it had been made of. The coffin was dark green, but it seemed very old. There were no decorations or carvings on it. The Shura coffin looked very simple, almost primal. Bauer curiously looked at the Shura coffin, and she used her fat hands to touch it. Hansen pressed on the Shura coffin, and he tried to open it. He realized that it wouldn't budge. That surprised him. In the Alliance, not many powers ought to have stopped him. Sin gathered up power to try again. But again, there was no change, and Hansen's power was insufficient to move it. There's more to the Shura Alphas than meets the eye. Hansen was getting excited, and he was one step closer to getting what he wanted. Jade Shura, how do I open this? Hansen looked at the Shura Queen as he asked. This is our Alpha's coffin. No one touches it, and none would dare open it. If you cannot open it, then how are we supposed to? The Shura Queen said. No, I know you know how to open it. Hansen looked at the Shura Queen coldly. This is not a grave. If I have guessed correctly, then the Shura Kings do not die here. The story of Shura Kings coming here and waiting to die is a lie. They entered your coffin, but the way to open it would be something known only by the kings themselves. In these circumstances, that would be you. The Shura Queen looked pale. She knew she couldn't hide things from Hans Sr. The Shura Queen shyly said, You are right. The Shura Kings, if possible at the end of their lives, walk into this coffin. This is what the Alpha taught us. It is the hope and desire of every Shura King. What hope? Hansen asked. A hope for continued life, the Shura Queen said. With a highlight of hesitation, she went on to say, There are words in the decree saying that when our lives have reached the end of their tether, we may come to the Shura Coffin. It is said it can extend our lives. It can allow us to be reborn. If you open it before that, however, bad things will happen to you. Hansen knew what she meant, and he coldly said, You can decide whether or not to open the coffin now, then. Open it or see the destruction of the entire Shura race. Chapter 2053 Path The Shura Queen walked to the altar and stood before the Shura Coffin. After bowing sincerely before it, she drew a dagger and stabbed at the head of the coffin. The dagger was purple, and it had been forged from a strange material. It sort of looked like her horns, but it was darker, and it looked heavier. The Shura Coffin did not have a seam, but the dagger was able to slip inside without any resistance. The handle was still stuck on the outside, however. It looked like a horn atop the coffin. There was a catch of noise, and then the entire coffin began to shake. The door opened to reveal what was inside. Hansen kept a firm eye on the coffin, and when it opened, a scary presence emerged. It came at the Shura Queen and Jade Minger, and the power tried to pull them inside the coffin. Even with the power that the Shura Queen possessed, she was unable to fight back. She and Jade Mingo fell forward. Hansen moved his hand and cut the power off. He pulled them both back, and then, the coffin shut and returned to appearing just as it had before opening. The dagger on the coffin was gone, though. It was only open for a moment, but in that time, Hansen had seen darkness inside the coffin. It was like a black hole. This wasn't just an empty box. The Shura Queen and Jade Minger were in shock. They did not know what had happened, and they were left shaken and pale. Hansen tried to push the coffin open, but again, it was no longer budging. So, he asked the Shura Queen the obvious question. Where is your dagger? The Shura Queen had a wry smile, and she said, The dagger has returned to the altar on the Shura's main planet. The next Shura ruler will be able to take it from the altar. Hansen did not say anything. He believed that was all they knew. Hansen used his powers to grab the Shura Queen and Jade Minger. Then, they teleported into a Shura palace. Keep being the good queen you are. Pretend nothing happened. Hansen looked at the Shura Queen and Jade Minger. After that, Hansen disappeared with Bauer. The Shura Queen and her daughter were left standing in silence, quite rattled. They could not believe a scary human such as that could exist. The fate of the entire Shura was in someone else's hand, and she was helpless to stop it. Hansen took Bauer home. The Shura Coffin was obviously a path that led to another dimension, but Hansen did not know where it went to. Hansen guessed that it led to the Geno universe, and they would teleport to a place occupied by the demon. If that was true, it all made sense. But that path did not look safe at all. It was obviously an unstable path, so the success rate of making it through the teleporter would be very low. 
The Shura Alpha said they could only try it immediately before their death. That meant entering it could be dangerous. If that was a path that led to the demon, then that was fairly awesome. The sanctuaries in the Geno universe were separate. He hadn't expected Azura to have been able to forge a path such as that. It was not stable, but it was amazing. This was all guesswork, though. Perhaps the path didn't actually lead to the Geno universe. Hansen did not plan on trying it. If that was a path to the demon, it'd be even more dangerous for him than going back to Return Ruin C. Sharon had died by Hansen's hands, and many demons would undoubtedly want to see him dead. If that path led to the heart of the demon, it was unlikely Hansen would be able to run. Hansen also learned that Azura had not died. Perhaps the Shura kings hadn't died, either, and they were just inhabiting a different dimension. Hansen suddenly thought of something. He had seen a person that looked like God's retribution. He thought that it was just someone similar, not the actual man he knew. But now that he had seen this path existing in the Shura coffin, he didn't think so anymore. If the Shura coffin could lead to the Geno universe, then Blood Legion might have something similar, as well. Blood Legion must be a factor here. The Nine Life Cat can enter the sanctuaries, and after I refine the Nine Life Cat pendant, I could do the same thing, too. The Nine Life Cat is related to Blood Legion, so if the Shura have a way to leave, then Blood Legion should know, Hansen thought to himself. Blood Legion has a whole host of members, but I have never encountered too many. I learned the first generation of the Blood Pulse Sutra, and Little Flower and Little Lingo have an impressive amount of strength. Blood Legion had been doing this for many generations, so they have to be much stronger. But when Hansen thought deeper about Blood Legion, he realized that they were probably like the Shura. They might have a way to leave the sanctuaries, but there was no way for them to come back. This was all guesswork on Hansen's part, of course. But in regards to the absent Geno fluid in the Shura King's gravesite, Hansen had no answer. Traditionally, the Geno fluid was prepared for a Shura King to consume. Perhaps they used it before opening the coffin. But then the humans came to steal it, and it dried up for good. How can I contact a Blood Legion member to ask this? Hansen was annoyed, as he couldn't find any Blood Legion members. I don't know if Mr. Lee is still in the Human King coffin. He called himself the Blood Legion leader, so perhaps I can ask him, Hansen thought. But then, thinking of this, Hansen was shocked. The Human King coffin is a coffin. Can that teleport you outside the sanctuaries too? Just thinking about all this was useless. He needed to go to the Human King shelter to take a proper look. It was strange that the coffin was in the sanctuaries, not the Alliance. There shouldn't have been a way for it to teleport all the way to the Geno universe. But when Nine Life Cat first appeared, he made a point of lying down atop that holy coffin. Hansen thought it was possible. Don't let me find you again, you asterisk shoal Nine Life Cat. Hansen thought angrily. Chapter 2054 The Power of the Blood Pulse Sutra After going back home, Hansen used the teleporter to return to the lower level sanctuaries. Then, he went to the human king's shelter and found the holy coffin. Hansen had been unable to open it before. Now, he was still unable to open it. It made him frown. If a human god went to the Geno universe, why aren't there any human races in the Geno universe? Hansen did not understand. Hansen left the human shelter, shelving all his guesses. He continued to absorb the blood that stained the blood feather knife, hoping to reach Marquis soon. Power was what he needed if he continued to seek the answers to his questions. If Hansen was able to beat up the demon leader, he might be able to learn all that he wished to. But he didn't have that power. He'd been forced to resort to Super God Spirit just to defeat Sharon. Hansen had a relaxing time. He went drinking with Zhang Danfeng and played some video games. He occasionally played with his Warframe on Skynet with 304 students. It had been a long time since Hansen had had the chance to experience some peace. Two months later, Hansen finally managed to clear all the blood off of the blood feather knife. But even so, he still needed a little bit more if he was to reach the status of a Marquise. But after the blood was cleaned from the blade, the knife itself shone with a holy light. It was as if it had been reborn, and it was very lively as a result. The holy light glistened from every line and detail of the feather. Hansen clutched the blood feather knife, and when he did, a holy form of power entered his body. He felt as if he had been blessed, and he felt his stats increase. But when Hansen let go of the knife, that holy power disappeared. Although this knife is not deified, it is certainly half deified. Hansen fingered the blood feather knife, 
rather ecstatic about its potential. With that knife, he'd have a higher chance of escaping Return Ruin C when the time came. Hansen wasn't going back to Return Ruin C yet, though. He went to the training room and brought out the upside down scale. With it, he was going to attempt to become a Marquise. Hansen used his Blood Pulse Sutra. He dropped a tidbit of his crystal blood onto the scale. His blood blended into it in an attempt to refine it. Hansen held the scale in his hand. The Blood Pulse Sutra's blood mist enveloped his entire body, and it created what looked like a large orb of blood. The story of Jeans, the Dongshin Sutra, and Jade Skin had special abilities of their own, but the Blood Pulse Sutra only showed its power with the spilling of blood. The power was strong, but it didn't really help Hansen in the field. It was just to ensure Hansen's children could carry on with his strength, but that inheritance wasn't as easy as it sounded. If Little Flower and Lingo did not practice the Blood Pulse Sutra themselves, they'd never achieve the potential offered by Han Sin's blood. If Little Flower and Lingo did practice the Blood Pulse Sutra, however, there were big risks involved in that, too. If Han Sin's bloodline carried on that way, his descendants might eventually carry blue blood, and they'd be proper Blood Legion members. That would also prevent them from making use of special powers and forced them to rely solely on the power bestowed upon them by the blue blood itself. Han Sen was still wondering whether or not he should teach them the Blood Pulse Sutra. For days later, though, the orb of blood re-entered Han Sen's body. When the blood mist was completely absorbed, the scale disappeared. Han Sen's body, however, glowed with a red light. Han Sen inspected his information, and what he saw delighted him. Han Sen, Super God Spirit Body, Geno Battle Body, Mutant Blood, Marquise, Spell, Earl, Dong Shen, Earl, Jade Skin, Earl. Level, Marquise Lifespan, 1000. Hansen was happy that his mutant blood had reached the level of a Marquise, but mutant blood only improved Hansen's fitness. Nothing else was increased. That made him rather depressed. Does the power of the Blood Pulse Sutra really only affect the children? Hansen thought to himself. Leveling up to Marquise meant Hansen could absorb the xenogeneic genes of a Marquise-class creature. So, Hansen brought out a few such mutant xenogeneic genes. He lifted the Xianyuan Dragon, Demon Stokow, and Demon Dragon mutant xenogeneic genes in the palm of his hand. But an announcement played, telling him he did not have enough genes of his own to absorb them. It looks like I'll need to find some more Marquise genes. Hansen felt depressed. He did have a few Marquise xenogeneic genes but they were still on Little Jade Island, over in Sky Palace. He hadn't brought them with him to the ancient god space. Since he couldn't return to Sky Palace yet, he would have to hunt. Hansen was going to return the three mutant xenogeneic genes to his destiny's tower. But as he did, his heart suddenly jumped. He used his blood pulse sutra on one of the mutant xenogeneic genes. The blood air blended into the Xianyuan dragon's orb, and it dyed the ball completely red. Hansen was so happy. He used his Blood Pulse Sutra to refine the Brain Orb. It blended into his blood successfully. His boiling blood was suddenly imbued with an unexplainable power. Hansen could see the power in his blood increase, but it was different from the way mutant xenogeneic genes had affected him before. This power only made his blood stronger. When the Xianyuan Dragon's Brain Orb was absorbed, the boiling blood cooled back down into crystal. His blood returned to its usual state but he could feel that it possessed a power it previously hadn't. Hansen used the Blood Pulse Sutra to activate his blood powers. The next second, he discovered that two small wings had appeared over his ears. They looked like the Xianyuan dragons. When the hand-sized, red ear wings appeared, Hansen felt the stats of his body increase, especially his speed. Haha, the Blood Pulse Sutra can be used like that? Hansen was so happy. He brought out another xenogeneic gene to try to absorb it. But Hansen only had an ordinary Earl material that wasn't mutant. He refined it, but he didn't gain its xenogeneic powers. Hansen brought out the Demon Dragon Mutant Xenogeneic Gene to refine, and the Blood Pulse Sutra absorbed the Demon Dragon Gene. Hansen used his Blood Pulse Sutra again, and giant red dragon wings sprouted from his back. The dragon wings flapped, and Hansen appeared 100 meters away. Sharon's teleportation ability breaks base flash. Hansen was so happy. Chapter 2055, Returning to the Return Ruined Sea Hansen's power was enough to compare with a Marquise due to the Dragon Wing buffs and Break Space Flash. Those two abilities made Hansen far stronger. 
Without hesitation, Hansen took out his demon stone cow mutant gene and used the blood pulse sutra to refine it. Hansen did not know if this ability to refine mutant genes was a power that the blood pulse sutra was supposed to have, or if it was simply a result of refining the scale. Either way, Hansen was incredibly happy with his new ability. It was sick. The demon stone cow's xenogenic gene was refined. After Hansen cast his blood pulse sutra, his body was covered with redstone. Ping. Hansen walked a single step, and when he did, a red pulse wave was emitted. It petrified everything around him. Fortunately, Hansen was able to cancel it quickly. If he hadn't, everything in the training room would have been turned to stone. With these three powers, I am sure to be able to escape return ruin C, Hansen thought, feeling cocky. Using these new powers, Hansen was little more than a redstone. Both of his ears had little dragon wings, and his back possessed a set of broader dragon wings. He looked like a humanoid dragon statue. It was no longer possible to determine his identity. Hansen's heart jumped, and he thought, Yes, I don't have to fight the dragon in return ruin C at all. They are looking for Hansen, so they won't be able to find me as long as I keep myself hidden. With this realization, Hansen felt relieved. He decided to rest at home for another two days before going back to the return ruin C. Remember me. Little Flower and Linger need you, Ji Yin and said before Hansen left, holding him tight. Hansen was touched by the sentiment. It had been a long time since he'd been in the Geno universe, and she was smart enough to figure out that he had run into some trouble before he left. But she didn't want to worry him too much, and so she hadn't told him. Don't worry. No one in this world can kill your husband. Hansen squeezed Ji Yin in tight and kissed her on the forehead. He wanted to survive even more now. Back in the return ruined sea, Hansen found himself on the seabed where the battle had last been waged. Hansen hid himself in a cave, and he gave the vicinity a scan with his Dong Shen aura. There were no life forces around, so he summoned his demon stone cow beast soul. With it, he turned into a strong stone cow. Kicking his hooves, he swam up from the bottom of the sea. He looked around and found some xenogenic sea creatures, but none of them were interested in him. They only gave him strange looks before swimming away. Hansen didn't swim up to the surface, however. He went back down to the bottom of the sea, only hoping to gaze above the water when he had well and truly left that area. But not long after, Hansen saw a giant battleship on patrol. Hansen knew that the people inside the battleship had seen him, but he was in stone cow mode. So, he kept moving. He noticed many of the other creatures avoiding the battleship, too. A few dragon and a Ghana lady moved around inside the battleship. The Ghana lady was Shio's. She had not yet left Return Ruin C. But the dragon in the ship weren't Dragon 15 and Long Ying. The leader of the collective was a dragon lady. There is a stone xenogenic in the Return Ruin C, Shio's said when she saw a stone cow show up on the radar. The dragon lady laughed. Sister Shio's, there are many water xenogenics in the sea, but there are many other xenogenics to be found, too. There are stone ones, and even fire ones. They live on the islands, primarily, but some are fond of living in the water. I see. Shio's was surprised to see a stone cow on the bottom of the sea. She didn't think it was Hansen, she merely found it unusual. Hansen left the battleship's radius without provoking any sort of response from it. Just as he was grinning to himself over how smoothly things were going, he saw a giant shark headed toward him. It had a rock body. S-H asterisk T. Am I that unlucky? Hansen felt depressed. He didn't want such trouble at a time like this, but trouble had a way of seeking him out. The giant shark swam extremely quickly. In his stone cow shape, Hansen couldn't perform many skills, either. If the battleship saw a stone cow using knife airs, they'd most certainly grow suspicious. Ping. The shark hit Hansen, and when the two rocks collided, it generated a large shockwave. The rock shark's power was similar to Hansen's. Hansen's body was knocked back 10 meters, cleaving a ravine along the seabed. The shark swung its tail around and came back after Hans Senator it wanted to bite into Hansen's neck. Hansen knew he would have to fight. The shark was a marquise, so fighting with simple power on power likely meant he could win. If he did fight back, however, he might end up drawing more attention. Hansen roared, lowered his head, and rocketed forward. His horns rammed into the stone shark's belly, peeling and shattering the rocky skin of the creature. It drew blood. The shark's shell was rock, but on the inside, it was still all flesh. 
It was nothing like the stone cow that was pure rock. Hansen kept trying to hit the shark, wanting to kill it and move on. But before he killed the shark, a few people came out onto the deck of the battleship. They were dragons, but Hansen did not see Dragon 15 or Long Ying amongst them. They were unfamiliar to him, aside from Shios, who he recognized. Hansen was shocked. Shios is here? She's smart. Has she noticed anything? While Hansen fought the shark, watching Shios and the dragon at the same, they approached him. He did not know what they wanted, but they weren't helping him in battle. Shios, you are interested in this stone cow? Let me ask Long Xian to catch it for you, the dragon lady told Shios. Shios smiled. There's no rush. I just think this stone cow is interesting. I want to take and keep it as a mount, so I should capture it by myself. Otherwise, it won't obey me, and making use of it might be more difficult. True. I have heard the Ghana are good at talking with Xenogeneics. Nineteen would like to see this. The dragon lady smiled. Chapter 2056, Stone Cow Shios and the dragon lady did not lower their voices, so Hansen could hear everything they said clearly. Trying to take me as a mount? How dare you? Even if I was willing to, wouldn't you need legs? Hansen wondered how he might get out of this particular predicament. The dragon lady looked as if she was Marquis class. The rest of the crew looked to be no less than dukes. With a battleship at their disposal, making an escape did not seem like a viable option. The main problem, however, was that if Hansen exposed himself, the entire return ruined sea would be going after him. The exit would be heavily guarded from that point on, and running would become impossible. No, I can't expose myself, Hansen kept thinking, as he tried to finish off the rocky shark. Xenogeneic Marquis hunted. Rock shark, Xenogeneic gene found. Obtained rock shark beast soul. Hansen ripped apart the rock shark's body and bit into a bone that was the Xenogeneic gene. He acted like nothing had happened and started to casually swim off. Shios wasn't going to let Hansen get away, though. She moved her snake tail and blocked Hansen's passage with a holy light. Hansen moved at Shios to show that he was a cow. Shios smiled, then waved her hand. A holy light halo then flew towards him. Hansen tried to chomp on the light with his teeth. He wanted to see if he could break it without exposing himself. The ring hit his head and then grew larger. It slipped over Hansen's head and tightened around his neck. The halo tightened around the stone cow's neck, feeling as if it was going to choke him. Hansen shook his head and tried to get rid of it, but that light was so tough. Even with the stone cow's powerful body, he could not break it. It must have been a special geno art belonging to the Ghana. As Hansen wondered whether or not he should use his own powers to break it, he heard a strange noise come from Shios. Hansen had never heard this before. It was not a specific language, but he knew what it meant. It was a comforting tone, compelling him to obey her. It also had an undercurrent of threat. It was complicated, but somehow, Hansen was able to hear and understand it. The Geno arts of the Ghana are creepy. It is a shame that Purgatory Heaven isn't Planet Eclipse. Otherwise, I could ask the Guna sisters, Hansen thought. Since I cannot run now, let's pretend that I have been captured. With Shio's status, perhaps she can take me out of Return Ruin C. Maybe then I can expose myself. Shio's kept making those sounds, and the halo continued to tighten. He felt as if his neck would snap. Hansen could get rid of the halo, but instead, he just widened his cow eyes and looked tamed. He moved to Shio's and did not look angry. He tried to seem as harmless as possible. Will you follow me? Shio's asked, seeing the stone cow behave that way. Moo. Hansen pretended his best to be gentle. He walked up next to her and rubbed against her body. Hansen kept rubbing against her, recalling the behavior of Little Silver and Little Star. He thought about them for tips on how a creature should behave if it wanted to be cute. Shios was happy with Hansen's performance. She stroked the cow's head and smiled. Follow me from now on, and you will benefit greatly. Moo. The stone cow mooed again, showing that it understood. Sister Shios is so powerful. I have learned a lot today, Dragon 19 complimented. It was just luck. This stone cow's intelligence isn't too bad, and its personality is very gentle. That's why this process was so smooth, Shio said. The halo around Hansen's neck loosened. It was not gone, but it was still hanging around him. This Geno art is quite interesting. I would like to learn it. It'd be far easier to catch Xenogeneics with it, Hansen thought to himself. Shios brought Hansen back aboard the battleship with her. Hansen pretended to follow her, 
and he did his best to behave nicely. Hansen was very good at acting cute because many of his pets were. All he had to do was copy some of their actions, and it made Shios and the others so happy. They were all very fond of him. Sister Shios, this stone cow is too cute. If you don't want it, you can give it to me. I will trade it for a Duke Golem mount, Dragon 19 said, holding the cow's neck and stroking it. Hansen felt as if his head was resting on something very soft. His eyes looked very innocent. Who are you kidding? It is just a stone cow, and it came from your return ruined sea. I'll just grab another for you later. I don't know if I'll have the chance to come back around these parts again, though. Shio smiled. Dragon 19, hearing her say this, did not push the subject. She stroked the stone cow's head again. Sister 19, are there any other places we have not been to? Shio's changed the subject. I have searched thousands of miles, and I think Hansen really did escape return ruined sea. If he hadn't, I would have found him by now, Dragon 19 said. Since they were talking about him, Hansen sat right next to Shios. He leaned against her, making sure he caught all they were saying. Shios frowned and said, How did he get out of Return Ruined Sea? Maybe he has space powers or a treasure of some kind. Otherwise, how could he have come here in the first place? Dragon 19 shrugged. Hansen is strong. He killed Sharon and Sister 13, and he managed to escape from Brother 15 and Long Ing. I am afraid only our big brother might be able to take him down. Shios frowned. I have been investigating Hans in a good deal. He fought Lone Bamboo in Sky Palace to a stalemate. He is a genius. Not many of the same level are capable of beating him. Ha! Huh. He is just lucky he hasn't encountered my big brother yet. Dragon 19 scoffed angrily. Dragon 1 is the best of the dragon. He is the leader of the dragon, so of course he is very strong, Shios said. But Hansen is gone. If my brother had been here to fight him, he'd have been killed. Speaking of Dragon 1, Dragon 19 looked very enthused. She seemed to really admire him. Shows and Dragon 19 did not plan on leaving Return Ruin Sea just yet. They continued searching for a while with their battleship. Shows thought Hansen was still around someplace. If it was Dragon 19 in command, they'd have left a long time ago. Chapter 2057 Conspiracy what is wrong with this woman? Does she have some sort of grudge against me? Hansen was depressed. Even the dragon thought Hansen had left Return Ruin Sea by now, but Shios was still determined to find him. That was why he was so depressed. If it wasn't for Shios, escaping Return Ruin Sea would have been a much simpler affair. Does she know something about me claiming Purgatory Heaven? Is that why she wishes to catch me so badly? Hansen thought that would be impossible, though. Hansen couldn't really use Purgatory Heaven so he had hidden it in Planet Eclipse. No one knew about it, so he couldn't think of any way that it could have been discovered. Shows rested in her room for a time, and Hansen followed her. Shows reclined on a deck chair to relax, but she didn't go to sleep. As she did, she stroked the stone cow's head. Where is Hansen hiding? Hansen was planning on resting, too, but she suddenly started talking to herself. Hansen wanted to ask her why she was looking for him, but he was unable to. Maybe he really did leave Return Ruin Sea, but that means it will now be impossible to catch him. The dragon and the demon cannot go to Sky Palace to capture him. Shows continued speaking to herself, trying to formulate a plan. Keep talking. Why do you want to catch me? Come on. Hansen was desperate to know. Judging from the tone of her voice, there had to be a reason why she wanted to find him so badly. But Shows did not say anything more, and she just fell asleep. Hansen was depressed but he had no choice but to rest. He cast a Geno Art to recover his power. He was a Marquise, so he could transform into a Marquise class being for a long time. It wasn't unlimited, however. Hansen guessed that in his current state, he could last around four more days. If he wasn't able to escape by then, he'd be in trouble. Seeing Sho's determination, he knew she wasn't going to stop her search. He didn't think he'd be able to escape in four days. If I cannot escape, then I will have to take a risk. I should kidnap Dragon 19 and take her as a hostage. Or maybe I should try to put pressure on shows and threaten her to take me out of here? Hansen thought to himself. Hansen thought Dragon 19 was very strong. The bodies of the dragon were impressive, and it would be hard to take her down without drawing the attention of others. Shows got a body did not look weak, either. Although her power wasn't as flashy as a dragon's, she had many tricky Geno arts. It would be hard to keep her suppressed in secret, too. 
Hansen thought that he should ultimately target Shios. Capturing Dragon 19 would only make the dragons want his head even more. But there were many elites within the dragon race, and some of them were deified. Even if he had a hostage, it wouldn't be safe. There was every chance he could be beaten before bringing the knife across Dragon 19's throat. Shios was different. She was alone within the dragon. The dragon might not care too much about her life, and Shios might not risk her life to save Dragon 19. Of the two, Hansen thought Shios was flat out simpler to get to. Hansen was thinking about how he might avoid the attention of the others on the ship if he captured Shios. There was no point in capturing her, otherwise. He had to take her down quietly, and he could not hurt her in a way that would draw the suspicion of the other dragon. He would need to use her to escape that place. It will be hard to threaten her without hurting her. Hansen turned it over in his head for a while. Eventually, however, he thought of a way. A power like Teeth Power could work, but if that power hurt her, it would be seen. He couldn't use it. Out of all Hansen's powers that could take Shios without attracting attention, his best chance was the Blood Pulse Sutra. He could put a drop of his own crystal blood into Shios's bloodstream, and then it would be very hard for her to separate the two. When Shios fell asleep, Hansen looked at her hand. He only needed to poke a hole in her finger and then put his own blood inside. Then, it'd be done. Hansen did not hesitate, and he used his tongue to lick her hand. A normal tongue would have been useless, but Hansen had practiced the art of tongue sword. It was no joke to get licked by his tongue. But before Hansen could get close to her hand, Shows was already looking at him. Hansen's heart jumped. This woman is tough. She has strong senses. Hansen's eyes opened wide, and he acted all cute. He kept on licking her hand, just like Little Silver did. When Shows saw Stone Cow being so cute, she smiled. She reached her hand out to stroke his head. Hansen was glad that he hadn't generated Tongue Sword just yet. He was just trying out licking her right now. If he hadn't tested it, he would have exposed himself. Hansen kept rubbing Shows' hand with his tongue. Shows did not pull away, and Hansen was able to continue licking her fingers. Hansen licked her twice without using Tongue Sword, but on the third time, when his tongue reached her fingers, the tongue produced a red sword air. That red sword air went into Shio's fingertip and expelled a drop of blood. Shio's reacted quickly, and when the red sword air touched her finger, she hastily fell back. Then, her body glowed with holy light. Hansen felt the halo on his neck tighten up. It was going to break his neck. If I were you, I would calm down and talk about this. Hansen released his dong shin aura and blanketed the room. The voices and the presences within were all locked down. He shifted back into his true self. Hansen. Shio's face changed. She never would have guessed that the stone cow was Han Senator. She felt so embarrassed that Hansen had been licking her fingers only moments before. Don't be mad. Look at your finger. Hansen pointed at her injured finger as he spoke. Shio's looked down. She could feel a strange power overlapping her middle finger. She used her own power against it, but she could not stop that power's movement. Within a second, that power went rushing into her heart. Then, it disappeared. Chapter 2058, Cooperation What did you do to me? Shows asked simply. She didn't sound frightened. Nothing. It's just a little insurance to guarantee that we have a jovial cooperation, Hansen said with a smile. There is no grudge between you and me. When you were being hunted by Dragon 15 and Long Ying, I did not attack you once. Why are you doing this? Shows asked calmly. I don't mean to trouble you. As I said, I only wish to cooperate with you. If you take me away from Return Ruin C, I will take the blight off of you, Hansen said reassuringly. What did you do to me? Shows asked again. Hansen laughed. Some things were better left unsaid. Fear was something no one was immune to. Would you believe me if I told you that your life was in my hands? Hansen asked. Of course, Shows said with certainty. So I don't need to say anything. If I want to get out alive, I cannot kill you. Neither can I hurt you. However, if you do anything to expose my presence here, you can watch yourself die, Hansen said. You think I wouldn't take a chance? Shows looked at Hansen impassively. Hansen smiled. He looked into her pretty eyes softly. Suddenly, the doorbell rang. A lady's voice sounded from the other side. Lady Shows, are you resting? Brother 15 is here, and he wishes to see you. Coming. Shows looked at Hansen, then headed for the door. Instead of stopping her, Hansen shape shifted back into the stone cow. 
When Sho saw that Hansen wasn't stopping her, her face looked glum. It was only for a moment, though. Her expression cleared, and she opened the door to find Dragon 19 standing on the other side. Where is 15? Shio's asked with a smile. Brother 15 is in the control room. Something has happened, so please go there, Dragon 19 said, looking awkward. Okay, Shio's answered. She closed the door slowly behind her, looking at Hans and the stone cow as she did. Shio's closed the door without prompting the smallest reaction from Hans' senator, he had gone to sleep, and it made her frown. If Hansen had looked uncomfortable and nervous, it would mean that he was not confident in what he had put upon her. The fact that he showed no reaction or desire to follow her showed that he was confident she had no hope of escaping his wrath. Shows kept checking her body up and down. The power had disappeared into her heart, and it was as if nothing had happened in the first place. There were only two possibilities that explained this. Firstly, this entire scheme was just a bluff. The other possibility was that Hansen was simply too strong for her to comprehend. She wasn't sure what to make of the entire situation. Being unable to determine what was going on actually made her worry a touch. Hansen stayed in Sho's room with a bit of worry himself. Hansen did not know what effect the crystal blood would have on her. But all he could do was stay where he was. He had to stay put and not show his worry. If he showed a lack of confidence, Sho's would doubt him. That would be bad. I've made my gamble. Let's see if she can remove the crystal blood inside of her. As he waited in the room, Hansen thought about what he might do if she sold him out. Time passed, and Hansen had been left in the room for two hours before the door opened again. Hansen didn't look up. His Dongxian aura was enough to tell him that Shows had returned to the room alone. Fine, you win. How do we cooperate? Shows walked over to the bed and sat on it. She smiled at Han Sr. It's simple. You take me away from here, and I will remove the effects I have stricken you with. Hansen then went on to say, but I am telling you right now that my appearance as a stone cow can only last another two days. You have two days to take me away from here. If you don't, then you and I must suffer together. But this deal is not fair. How can I be certain that you'll remove whatever it is you've put upon me? Shio's asked. I am controlled by you too. Hansen pointed at the halo around his neck. How can a small trick like that trouble you? You killed Sharon. This is just a minor halo, Shio said casually. If you don't believe me, you can put something else onto me, and we can remove them together once we're free. But I don't think that is necessary. It is as you said, there is no grudge between us. If you save me, I will have no reason to upset you or the rest of the Ghana, Hansen said. Sure. Let me put an effect on you. We can remove them together once we're out of here, Shio said. Okay, but you have to remove this halo. Only one effect on each of us at a time, Hansen said. Shio's waved her hand and the halo around his neck broke. She slithered her snake body closer to Han Sr. Hansen didn't move. Whatever she put on him, it would be removed whenever he enabled his super god spirit mode. Shios, seeing Hansen stand where he was without moving, sighed and thought to herself, he is so confident. He must have cast something really powerful on me. With a bit of hesitation, Shios smiled at Han Senator, she put a hand on Han Sen's face, his human face, and tilted it upward. Her hands were touching Han Sin's jaw as she angled his head for a clear display of his neck. You have good skin. Even I am jealous. Xiao's voice was magnetic. Her lips were coming in close to his neck. Her red lips opened, and just as they were about to come into contact with his neck, two white teeth were revealed, like the fangs of a snake. They shone as she bit into the flesh of his neck. Hansen did not avoid it. He just stood there like nothing was happening. Shows raised her head and pulled back. His neck had teeth marks on it, with two deeper spots where the fangs had been. Okay, now we can discuss business. Shows licked the blood off her lips with her tongue. She smiled at Hans Sr. Chapter 2059, First Entry You can really only remain a stone cow for another two days? Shows asked, looking at Hans Sr. Yes. Hansen nodded. Then this is pretty bad. I said I wanted a sea wing beast for a mount and so Dragon 15 invited me to an island where they live. I cannot leave before I do this. Otherwise, he might grow suspicious, Shio said. How long will this take? Hansen asked. From my estimates, I'd say three days, Shio said. Fine. Three days. If we're not out in three days, we die together. My life is cheap, 
so it'd be an honor for me to die beside a beautiful Ghana princess. Hansen laughed. Shows looked at Hansen, but she was speechless. The limit of only being able to shapeshift for another two days was a lie. She couldn't be certain what was fact or fiction with him. Hansen did not ask anything more about why Shows was investigating him. He wanted to wait until they were free and clear before resuming that particular discussion. Shows was not dumb, though. She knew that Hansen knew, so she never felt secure near him. If Hansen did not have the Ghana's kiss, Shows would not have wanted to send him out. Sea Wing Beast rested atop the cliffs upon an island. There were many caves in those cliff sides, and they lived in such pockets. Sea Wing Beast looked like blue leopards with two blue wings. The adults could grow to be 20 meters long. Although they were only a Marquis class Xenogeneic, they flew extraordinarily quickly, and they performed well on land and water, too. They were one of the top Marquis mounts one could obtain. Right now, it was Sea Wing Beast breeding season. Dragon 15 wished to get shows one of their eggs. The adults of that species were too wild and could not be tamed. The battleship might have disturbed the creatures if it got too close, so they made sure to stop 100 miles away. Dragon 15 walked to the island where the sea wing beasts lived. Shio sat atop the stone cow that was Hansen, looking very elegant. She must be doing this on purpose, Hansen thought grumpily. She was there to collect a new mount for herself. She could have totally left Hansen back on the ship, but nope. She decided to ride him there. Hansen had to endure it, though, and he took comfort in knowing he could get her back when he made it out. Shios, they are Marquis class. Sea wing beasts are much better than this stupid stone cow. Dragon 15 saw one of the sea wing beasts fly by, and he smiled. They are very nice Marquis mounts, but they are difficult to tame. Unlike this stone cow, Shios smiled. Brother, you do not understand. The stone cow is dumb, and that's why it is so cute. I would like one, too but I haven't been able to find another. Dragon 19 still really wanted one for herself. She had gone in search of one, but sadly, found nothing. Dragon 15 looked at Hansen and said, It's just a stone cow. If you like it that much, 19, just ask Shios to give it to you. Shios is always so nice, so I am sure she wouldn't disappoint you. After that, Dragon 15 looked at Shios seriously and said, Shios, I only have one sister and my sister really likes that dumb creature. I will trade you a fire beast for it. Hansen felt terrible. That Dragon 15 was way too smart. Just hearing Dragon 19, he grew a suspicion. If 19 likes it that much, she can just take it. There is no need to sully our relationship with trading. Shows knew what 15 was attempting, so she maintained her cool and smiled. Really, Shows? Dragon 19 asked giddily. Of course. It's just a Marquis mount and it was tamed in your return ruined sea. It is fine by me, Sho smiled. Thank you, sister. But you will have to accept 15th's fire beast. Otherwise, I'll feel poorly about this. Dragon 19 smiled. This woman just cleared herself of distrust. Hansen felt sad, but he knew that there was no other choice. If Sho's hadn't made the trade, Dragon 15 would have grown suspicious. But now that they had made the trade, Hansen couldn't use Sho's to leave. I will have to make it up as I go along. If Dragon 19 sends shows away, I might have an opportunity to rush out, Hansen thought. Little cow, you're mine. Dragon 19 held Hansen's head and rubbed his cheeks. She really adored the thing. If I knew this was to happen, I wouldn't have acted all cute, Hansen thought in depression. Dragon 15, seeing this, lost his suspicion. He accompanied shows to the cliffs and had longing obtained some sea wing eggs from a cave for her. He gave Shows and Dragon 19 two eggs each. After they returned to the battleship, Dragon 19 pulled Hansen into her room. Dragon 19 really loved the stone cow. She rolled around with him and even slept with him. He was like a giant toy for her. Due to Dragon 19 taking Hansen everywhere, however, he could not rest. If things proceeded this way, he'd only last four days. Three days went by, but there was still no movement from Shows. Hansen almost wanted to expose himself, but then he heard Dragon 19 mention that Shows was leaving. Dragon 19 was going to send Shows off with her. This made Hansen very happy, but the bad thing was that Dragon 15 and Long Ying were leaving at the same time. I only have one shot at this, and I'm leaving Return Ruin C no matter what. I will kill whoever is in my way, Hansen thought angrily. The battleship was headed for Return Ruin C's exit. It took half a day for it to reach there 
and luckily, Hansen was still in his stone cow form. People thought Hansen had already made it out of Return Ruin C, but there were still many Duke class guards standing around. Hansen could see at least ten dukes. That was far too many for him to handle. Those dukes were not pure dragons, but they couldn't have been that weak if they were selected to stand there as security. Fortunately, there were no king class sorts in the vicinity. If there was, he really couldn't risk this. What made Hansen most depressed was that Dragon 15 was not walking Shows out. They stopped at the exit, and seeing Shows walk out of Return Ruin C, Hansen had no choice but to force his way after her. Ping. The stone cow stomped the ground, sending out a wave of petrification. Chapter 2060, A Thousand Miles of Blood. Hansen used his stone cow body to rush forward. The shockwaves came thick and fast from his feet. Dragon 19, Dragon 15, and Long Ying were up front. Dragon 19 did not expect this, and so she had no time to block. She was the first to be struck by the wave of petrification, and she turned to stone in an instant. Dragon 15 and Long Ying were able to quickly evade it. They struck that petrification wave with their dragon presence. It did little to stop the wave, though, and they felt their bodies begin turning to stone. Seeing them get petrified, Hansen started to feel rather cocky. But suddenly, there came a roar. One of the dragon guards was shining. He created a halo which quickly disabled the active petrification wave. D asterisk M in. There is a geno art to remove petrification? Hansen's stomach sank, and he stopped using his stone cow body, which was too slow. He revealed his true self, drawing his blood feather knife as he ran for the exit. The few dragon dukes on guard leapt forward. They all cast their dragon powers and ran towards him. That is Hansen. Kill him. Dragon 15 yelled in fury. He became a xenogeneic and jumped towards Han Sr. Long Ying was even faster than he was, though, and her spear was fast approaching Hansen from behind. Hansen looked unconcerned. Two small blood-red wings appeared on his ears, and giant dragon wings sprouted from his back. His body turned dark red. He looked more like a dragon than Dragon 15 did. And on top of that, he had become far stronger. Whoever gets in my way will die. Hansen clutched his blood feather knife and raced towards the Duke Dragons. He did not care about Long Ying and Dragon 15's powers. As the Dragon Presences and the Lance converged on Hansen, he simply flapped his wings and disappeared. The scary Dragon Presences ended up hitting Long Ying's Lance, which created an explosion and a shockwave that sent her and the Duke stumbling back. Hansen was in front of the Duke Guards now. His knife immediately slashed towards one of the dukes with a knife air that looked like a purple fong. The duke was still reeling from the shockwave, so he used his lance to try to block the strike. Dong! The blood feather knife broke through the duke's lance and plunged into his chest. It broke the bones and ravaged the exposed organs. Hansen moved quickly towards the gateway out of Return Ruin C. Dragon 15 and the others chased after him, as all the dukes collected their power and sent it toward him. It was a wild storm on his heels. Hansen kept flashing, using break space flash to teleport a hundred meters at a time. He dodged the attacks while swinging his blood feather knife. Many knife silks were weaved in his wake. Arg. The duke in the lead came into contact with the first knife silk. He moved too quickly, and the momentum tore his body in half across the silk. Hansen was still feeling cocky. The half deified blood feather knife's knife silks were far stronger than his usual work. They could cut the body of a duke with ease. And while that duke might have been clumsy enough to allow that to happen, it was still an impressive surprise. But before Hansen could revel in his happiness, many more dragons and xenogeneics appeared through the gateway. He hadn't expected there to be so many dragons immediately outside Return Ruin C. Seeing this, he knew he would have to kill if he wanted to get out. He used his powers like crazy, diving into the crowd of xenogeneics with his blood feather knife. Hansen, this is the day you die. Dragon 15 turned into a xenogeneic and continued the chase. He held his lance like a drill, spinning through the air as he came. The sky is in my hands. You are just a doll. How dare you say that? Hansen followed the whims of his knife, casting his skills to the best of his abilities. As he went, he also employed Heavenly Go and the Dongshten Sutra. Blurk. He moved like a mountain spring. Hansen's body was very strong. Wherever he went, Knife lights were cast, and there was a ceaseless spraying of blood. Limbs were lopped and scattered all about. Shows saw Hansen killing thousands of xenogeneics and nobles. 
She witnessed his red body repeatedly flash as the stream of blood became a raging river. Dragon Dukes and even pure dragons like Dragon 15 were unable to bring him harm. Dragon 15 was in the fight, but Shows was out of it. With a look of absolute shock, she watched Hansen battle the horde of Xenogeneics. Normally, she would think Hansen was weaker than the Dukes. He'd appear far inferior to them. But with what she was seeing now, she knew he wasn't. And she noticed Dragon 15 just following Hansen's blade like a puppet. Wherever Hansen went, the others were being dragged. They all did things far slower than Hansen did. The feelings elicited were scary. It made Sho's scalp feel numb, as a chill ran through her heart. Those who follow under the sky's path are all dolls. The words popped into Sho's head, and she had no idea where they came from. Scary man. No wonder he was able to kill Sharon. His knife skills are way beyond his level, Sho said to herself. The mountains and the rivers were dyed with blood, all because of the knife not being in its scabbard. Hansen fought for a thousand miles, and wherever he went, dragons came for him. And on and on, they kept on coming. Hansen was soaked in blood, and severed heads bounced around his feet. The invisible knife skills he employed had taken many lives that were airborne, even. But even so, the Xenogeneics continued coming for him. Hansen, if I don't kill you today, I won't be a dragon. Dragon 15 was so mad, his dragon body came flying forward. The lance was like a needle, and it came spinning towards Hans Sr. Hansen swung his blood feather knife, and the knife skill and the lance collided. The knife air was broken. Long Ing was like a flying dragon. Her lance was like a raging beast. Hansen flapped his wings and evaded her strike. If he didn't have break space flash, he was sure to have been hurt. The power Sharon wielded was too incredible, and Hansen wouldn't have been able to kill him without super god spirit. He would have been the one to die. Countless bones snapped and streams of blood ran everywhere. Hansen killed across tens of thousands of miles, but there were still many Xenogeneics coming for him. He wouldn't be able to kill them all. The dragon were a famous high race of that universe, and they deserved their reputation. Hansen, a grand mistake you have made, making an enemy of the dragon. A new, scary dragon flew down to the battleground. Big brother! Dragon 15 screamed excitedly. Hansen was shocked. The leader of the dragon, Dragon 1, had come. Chapter 2061 Landslide Breaks a Thousand Evils An invisible pressure came down from the sky, and it made Hansen frown. The Xenogeneics and the nobles rolled back from him like a receding tide. All they did then was surround him. Hansen raised his head and saw ten beasts that looked like birds. But they didn't look exactly like birds, and they were pulling a carriage. That scary presence stemmed from those monsters. Hansen felt sick. Those ten monsters were stronger than the Dragon Dukes, and they could very well have been king class. That meant the person in the carriage they pulled had to be even scarier. Hansen did not understand the Dragon Society much, but he had heard of Dragon 1 through Dragon 19 in shows. They said he was the absolute leader of the dragon, but Hansen believed him to be young and a duke. However, Hansen had forgotten one crucial thing. Being young as a dragon and being young as a human were two very different things. Humans under the age of 30 were considered young, but when the sanctuaries were found, their lifespan was increased. The definition of young was therefore pushed back. Dragons had a longer lifespan, though. Their young ones could be a few hundred years old so that was far beyond Hansen's expectations. The curtains were drawn, revealing a dragon sitting inside wearing a crown. He was clad in black armor. Hansen couldn't get a feel for his presence, but from his mere appearance, Hansen could tell that he was a king. A male and a female dragon also sat inside the carriage. They didn't look to be king class, but Hansen sensed they were still extremely dangerous. Dragon 15 and Dragon 19 ran to the black crown dragon king and bowed. Greetings, Seven, Nine, and Big Brother. The Dragon King was Dragon One, Hansen thought. How would he survive with a Dragon King adversary? You were Hansen, Knife Queen student? Dragon One asked the question, but remained seated in the carriage. Yeah, Hansen said. Dragon One did not ask anything more. He spoke to the other Dragon Man. Nine, go and take him. Others will think we are weak if taking a Marquis costs too much. Yes, Big Brother. That young dragon exited the carriage and walked to Han Sr. Sho saw the young dragon walk to Han Sen, and her expression became dire. The nine sons of the dragon are different from ordinary dragons. 
all of them have a scary power, and Dragon One himself is here today. There is no way Hansen can escape from this, but I do not know what he did to me. What if I will later be unable to break the spell he put on me? Shios was worried. Hansen saw Dragon Nine approach with a lance. He couldn't sense any amazing power from the man, but Hansen believed that he was dangerous nonetheless. Hansen thought he was the same level as Sharon. What's wrong with these dragons? Hansen thought to himself. He was not worried about Dragon Nine, but he was worried about Dragon One. Nothing would be resolved by beating Dragon Nine. With Dragon One there, though, he could not escape. Should I go back to the sanctuary again? Hansen really did not want to do that. Dragon Nine. The young dragon stopped in front of Hansen, wearing red armor and carrying a lance. It was similar to the garb Hansen wore. It was all red. Looking from afar, it would look like two dragons were about to engage in battle. Hans Senior Hansen merely said his name. Dragon Nine did not speak again. He waved his red lance towards Hans Senator. His lance skills were similar to those of Dragon 13 and Dragon 15. That being said, those same skills were far more wretched when yielded by Dragon Nine. It made Hansen feel that no matter how well he dodged or how far he went, he could not escape the attack. Hansen's eyes froze, and he swung his blood feather knife at the dragon. The knife silks came against the lance light, but they were broken. The lance that was sharper than a needle continued its flight towards Hans Sr. Dong. Blood feather knife's blade struck the lance, but the lance light was not broken. It spun like a drill, creating a flurry of sparks against the knife. Hansen almost couldn't hold it as he was pushed back. Hansen swung his blade three times to break the lance light. Hansen was familiar with Marquis' evil breaker powers. Dragon 9's evil breaker power was far stronger than Dragon 13's, though and it was like a cold light. Hansen's power was no worse than Dragon Nine's, but Dragon Nine's lance was too focused. It was like a small needle being thrust into a patch of soil. There was only one small speck of earth that would be hit, and the attack couldn't be blocked. Hansen used an under-the-sky knife air. It was focused, but it was still worse than Dragon Nine's lance. The dragons were professionals when it came to concentrating power. Fighting against them with simple force was something of a death wish. Hansen used his Dongshan aura to check Dragon Nine's lance. The sequence structure of the lance was like a beehive, and he almost couldn't make out the pattern of the honeycomb. Hansen just barely blocked that lance. But already, a second lance had come. Before it ended, however, a third was on its way. The lance lights kept on coming, not cutting Hans in a moment of slack. Hansen moved his feet to evade Dragon Nine's lance. Unless he was able to concentrate power in a similar way, he would be beaten by continuing down this road. After Hansen dodged every landslide, the light suddenly exploded. That concentrated power was scarier than a Marquise's power should have been when it exploded. It was too late for Hansen to fight. Hansen flapped his wings and teleported. When he appeared again, he was a hundred meters away. He had managed to avoid the explosion. Dragon Nine kept on attacking. If the landslide missed Hansen, it would explode. So, Hansen had to keep on dodging and putting himself in a disadvantageous state. The dragon nobles and xenogeneics that were watching were so happy. They chanted Dragon Nine's name so loudly that it was a little frightening. Dong! Hansen's blood feather knife hit the lance, and the lance moved like a spinning dragon. He held blood feather knife and kept getting pushed back, with his legs cleaving two deep trenches across the earth. Chapter 2062 Blood Dragon Light a few knife strikes broke the lance light. Hansen swung his blood feather knife, and many knife silks were weaved through the air. They tangled and knotted themselves around Dragon Nine's wings, limbs, and body. He was unable to hold his lance and thrust anymore. Hansen had been dodging for so long so he could cast his knife silks. To deal with a strong power like Dragon Nine's, soft power was useful. Dragon Nine's body was gripped tightly by the silks. They tore through his armor and dug into his skin, but the contact produced sparks. Dragon Nine's body had the same glow that the lance did, and all of a sudden, the knife silks around his body were broken. Dragon Light Protection Shios recognized the power he had just employed. Hansen frowned. The power on Dragon Nine was concentrated like his lance was. It broke the knife silks easily. No one can beat the power of the Dragon Light. Dragon Nine moved his body shaking off all the spiderweb-like strands of silk that remained. The lance and his body synergized perfectly as they came after Hansen again. 
Dragon Nine's whole body was concentrated with a strong red light. He could use the Evil Breaker Dragon Light with amazing precision, and Hansen found himself at a disadvantage once more. He had to rely on his formation to fight. Hansen observed Dragon Nine's power. It was different from Dragon Thirteen's Evil Breaker Lance. The Red Dragon Light was more concentrated than Dragon Thirteen's Evil Breaker Lance's lights. The Red Dragon Light was like something living. It concentrated and exploded when it needed to, unlike Dragon Thirteen's Lance lights, which lost all form of control when expelled from the body. Those really were just simple Lance lights. This must be a modified version of Evil Breaker Power. Hansen tried to think of a way he might triumph over this new form of attack. Needlehead versus Light. I need to generate more power than he does. If I don't, I will lose. Hansen quickly made a decision. Although his knife silks were concentrated, they still weren't as dense as the Evil Breaker powers. But the knife silks also possessed qualities that the Dragon Light lacked. The Dragon Light was rough and strong, whereas the knife silks were soft and gentle. They were polar opposites. Hansen had suffered under an Evil Breaker Lance's power before, so he was fairly proficient in doing battle against that sort of technique. Now that he looked at Dragon Nine's Dragon Light structure, Hansen had a new thought. If he was able to use his gentle powers perfectly, they would not be any weaker than his enemy's strong power. But Hansen was not very good with this power. If his Jadeskin leveled up to Marquis class, he could effectively use Moon to do battle with Dragon Nine. But right now, only the Blood Pulse Sutra had reached Marquis status. The Blood Pulse Sutra was for making babies and absorbing xenogenic genes. It was the number one geno art for passing down traits, but for combat, it was a little on the limp side. Hansen planned to learn the structure of Dragon Nine's Dragon Light. He wanted to combine it with Moon's gentle power. That way, the knife silks could become stronger and achieve greater concentration. This was what the Dongxian Aura was good at doing. After examining the honeycomb design that Dragon Nine used to concentrate his power, Hansen restructured the mass of his knife silks. That way, he could apply the gentleness of the moon to the brute force of a replicated dragon light. The Dongxian aura was firing on all cylinders, and when Hansen slashed, the knife silks came flowing out like a flurry of ribbons. They broke before they even touched the landslide. It was not easy to produce knife silks that were a combination of two opposing powers. Luckily, the Dongxian Sutra allowed him to modify the delicate sequence structures of his silks, and Yin Yang Blast allowed him to reverse the Yin and Yang of his powers. If not for those two skills, he wouldn't even have thought about attempting this. Even so, Hansen tried it many times to no avail. If the soft powers were too much, they made the knife silks too weak. If the force power was too much, then the knife silks would shred themselves. Hansen needed to find a balance between the heavy and soft forces to make his plan work. That way, the knife silks would be tough enough without destroying themselves. This was just the beginning, though. He continued using Dragon Nine's honeycomb power to concentrate the knife silks so he could go against the Dragon Light. Hansen's tests kept on failing. He used the Dragon Wings on his ears and his movements to avoid Dragon Nine's attacks. No matter how much power Dragon Nine put into his attacks, though, he could not harm Han Sr. Shio's was frozen. She could tell Hansen was having a problem with his knife silks and that he was testing something. Only Hansen could conduct such tests while doing battle with an enemy like Dragon Nine, and Dragon Nine couldn't stop him no matter how hard he tried. Dragon One and the others could tell what was going on, too. It infuriated Dragon Fifteen, who shouted that Hansen should die. How dare he humiliate Dragon Nine this way? Dragon Seven frowned. Hansen is weird. He has dragon wings on his back that looks like ours, and he teleports in the way Sharon did with his break space flash. But only Sharon was able to use that power due to his ties to the demon. How does Hansen do what he is doing? Dragon One grunted. It is fine. Break space flash costs a lot of energy. The more he uses it, the more exhausted he will be. Sooner or later, he will fail. Dragon 19 curiously asked, Big Brother, what is Hansen testing? His knife silks are getting weaker. He is copying, Dragon 1 muttered with disdain. Copying what? Dragon 19 did not understand. He is copying Old Nine's Evil Breaker Dragon Light. He's trying to use it to improve his knife silks, Dragon 1 said. At those words, everyone was shocked. Dragon 15 was so angered by this, he cackled. Hansen has some balls. The Evil Breaker power of the dragon is difficult to copy. 
It's stupid to even think about trying it if you don't have the body of a dragon. And Brother Nine's evil breaker powers were modified in accordance to the specific needs and proficiencies of his body. Concentrated powers are Brother Nine's area of expertise. How can Hansen hope to copy him? Just like Dragon 15 said, Hansen's knife silks kept failing because it was either too hard or too soft. He couldn't find a balance. Dragon 9 was enraged by Hansen's behavior. His pretty face looked hard. I was bombing the blood dragon pool. I swap skin every nine days. That is how I have received my blood dragon body a thousand times. And that is what enables me to possess the evil breaker powers and create the blood dragon light I wield. You cannot simply copy this. Chapter 2063 Blood Dragon's Anger Hansen did not care. He kept on swinging knife airs at his foe. Most of them failed, but many were able to come close to the basic shape that he needed. It was like a plucked string, vibrating to produce tones that could break the sky. Dragon Nine's evil breaker Blood Dragon Light was unable to touch Hansen, and it made him furrow his brows in frustration. The Blood Dragon Light flowed brighter, and the light in his wings became solid. It was like a fog of blood obscuring the sky. Red scales appeared all across Dragon Nine's body, and his hands produced red dragon talents. A red mist rose from his horns, and his entire body grew to twice its original size. He was four meters tall now. The scary presence he once carried only grew scarier. It was like an ocean wave, endlessly building in size. Hansen looked at Dragon Nine. The blood feather knife was still busy producing knife silks. Dragon Nine didn't bother dodging. He allowed the silk to fall upon him, as the light would break them before they could even land atop his scales. Your xenogenic draconic body is really nice, Hansen said politely. Dragon Nine snarled. The xenogenic dragon body is nothing to one of the dragon. My blood dragon body is different, however. Even if you have break space flash, I am now something you cannot hope to escape. I would like to know what the difference is. Hansen kept talking as he repeatedly swung his knife. He was starting to grasp a subtle sense of what he needed to do. The knife silks that were made of both a soft and strong power were manifesting with a better success rate. All he had to do now was to concentrate what he was coming to grips with and channel what he needed to learn from Dragon Nine to make them as tough as the Dragon Lights. Dragon Nine did not respond. He lifted his Dragon Lance with two hands. His evil breaker blood Dragon Light was spreading across the weapon, and the lance reacted as if it was alive. It became a scary blood dragon, and it roared in Dragon Nine's hands. Its glow intensified. Hansen kept swinging. The knife silks cut across Dragon Nine's body repeatedly, but the attacks did nothing. Old Nine is really mad. He cast Blood Dragon's anger. Dragon Seven said with a smile. Dragon Fifteen said, If this is all he needs to kill Hansen, he should just do it. What's the point in talking? Hansen looked glum. He knew Dragon Nine's lance was strong, and so he started moving his blood feather knife faster. Hansen, accept my blood dragon's anger. The power in Dragon Nine's body reached the max. His red dragon wings flapped, and the lance he held looked like a ravenous monster. The dragon was a manifestation of light, and it held the power to destroy the world. It appeared in front of Hansen, and it was going to consume him. Hansen flapped his red dragon wings and teleported 100 meters away. This was the furthest away he could teleport with break space flash. But when Hansen moved, something went awry. The blood dragon's body exploded, and the dragon light went off like a firework. The concentrated lance light was perfectly pure, and it expanded to a radius of one mile. And it was not like an arrow that, once fired, became nothing. The dragon light exploded like a hail of needles. No matter which way Hansen moved, he'd be unable to dodge it. The dragon light wasn't random or uncontrolled. If one touched Hansen, the other streams of light would turn to riddle him with numerous strikes. Hansen's body would be turned into a pincushion, and the dragon light would explode from inside him. Not even a Duke Elite could escape a power as wretched as that. Break Space Flash's max distance was 100 meters. Hansen couldn't use it to get far enough away to escape the Blood Dragon's anger's area of effect. If I cannot dodge, then there is no point trying. Hansen gripped his blood feather knife and kept swinging at the dragon light. He did not use under the sky. Now, he was using teeth knife. Fong. The purple knife air became a toxic fong headed towards the dragon light. The purple knife air struck the dragon light and made a catch a sound. Teeth knife's purple mist was broken through and dispersed. A second later, 
The dragon light had destroyed it, and the light kept moving towards Hans Sr. Hansen retreated and continued using his blood feather knife. He was still determined to use Tusk, and so two purple teeth marks appeared on the dragon light next. It made a scary, cracking noise once again. The teeth power was shattered, but it shattered more slowly this time. It made the blood dragon's anger far slower, and it gave Hansen enough time to get out of the blood dragon's anger's area of effect. But the blood dragon's anger was like something alive. The dragon light became a red dragon that sought to consume Hans Senator when Hansen evaded it. It exploded. Let me see how many times you can teleport. Dragon 9 coldly looked at the blood dragon's anger covering Hans Senior. Hansen used teeth powers, but this time, they were more solid than before. A squeaking noise was made when the two collided, and then the teeth powers shattered. Dragon 7 was shocked. His teeth powers now seem different. What's the difference? He copied Brother Nine's concentrated powers. No matter how hard he tries, though, he won't get anything half as good as Brother Nine's blood dragon light. Dragon 15 looked haughtily as Han Sr. Things weren't as simple as he initially believed them to be, however. When Hansen used teeth powers the fourth time, the purple funk struck, it was still broken by the blood dragon's anger. However, it also managed to chip off a bit of the dragon light. Hansen wanted to use soft and strong powers on the knife silks, but knife silks were merely thin strings. They were worse than the dragon light when compared side by side. The results were different when Hansen tried to use that concentrated power on teeth knife instead. The strong and soft powers melded well with the teeth powers. When it was concentrated, the sharp power was no worse than what the dragon light could achieve. After adding the soft elements, the teeth power became both soft and tough. It was not easy to break when it was hit. If it was too tough, it'd break. If it was too soft, it'd bend. Teeth powers were able to benefit well from both aspects. While they were concentrated, his tearing power became stronger. Catcha. Catcha. Toxic teeth and dragon lights came to collide against each other in the air. In the beginning, Hansen's teeth power was at a disadvantage, and it kept being broken. But as Hansen kept swinging, teeth knife gradually improved. After 10 slashes, he could fight the blood dragon's dragon light. The purple smoke broke, and a red light went flying. Teeth and a dragon were fighting in the air. No one could tell who had an advantage between the two. Chapter 2064, Knife Lock Dragon 9 how is that possible? Shios was shocked. She had heard of Dragon 9 before, as his blood dragon light was famous. The concentrated powers Dragon 9 wielded were likely the greatest out of all the dragons in existence. When Dragon 1 was a Marquise, not even he was as mighty as Dragon 9. This was because Dragon 9 had a blood dragon body. Even other dragons of a higher rank could not accomplish what he had. Hansen could concentrate his powers now, the same as Dragon 9 did. He had learned it over the course of their short fight. It was unbelievable. Shios wasn't the only one thinking this. The realization made Dragon 1 frown. Dragon 7 and Dragon 15 were simply dazed, and Dragon 19 stared in confusion. Pang. The tusk and the blood dragon light came against each other. The purple mist and the blood light broke at the same time. Dragon 9 looked ill. He roared. His dragon lance was thrust forward at Han Sen with a red light across it taking the shape of a dragon. It was far scarier than the last blood dragon light. Hansen did not take a moment's pause as he pushed back with his blood feather knife. He used tooth for a tooth to fight. The demonic tusk and the blood dragon fought each other in the skies. Purples and reds collided together repeatedly, summoning all sorts of explosions. The xenogeneics that were spectating too close to the battle started to spill blood. They were affected by the shock waves of that fight. Some of the weaker ones simply exploded, sending showers of blood everywhere. The mist started to disappear. The giant blood dragon light shattered, but Hansen's knife air had not. The purple-looking tusk was free to assault Dragon 9, and so it went. Dragon 9 managed to use his lance to break the tusk into pieces, but doing so weakened his will. His concentration skills had lost to Hans Sr. Dragon 9 had not really lost the fight yet but Hansen had stolen his concentration talent. If it was pure concentration power that mattered, Hansen was still weaker. Dragon 9's power was strong, whereas Hansen's power was soft. When two similar powers came against each other, Dragon 9's power was the one to break. When Hansen's power was mostly shattered, there were still shards that were solid. That was the benefit of having soft powers. 
things broke when you put too much force on them. The reason why Hansen had an advantage was because he was a little bit soft. Now, they were both back to square one. The modified teeth powers had the same damage output as Dragon Nine's Dragon Light. Dragon Nine could no longer use his Dragon Light to block Hansen's knife power. He couldn't just keep on attacking. Teeth power was unleashed from Hansen's hand, and it repeatedly came against Dragon Nine's lance. Two overbearing powers were in the thick of battle, and the shockwaves kept pushing the audience back. If they were touched by a knife air or a lance light, they'd die in a heartbeat. Hansen's knife skills were getting stronger, but there was no improvement on Dragon Nine's side. He had lost his edge of suppression. Dragon Nine was not as good as Hansen when it came to raw technical skill. Impossible. Impossible. Dragon Nine could not accept what was happening. He had endured a lot to get to where he was with Blood Dragon Light, and yet Hansen had copied him and become better than him. Seeing it made the dragon sick. Dragon Nine spat some dragon blood across the dragon lance. The dragon lance glowed with a dragon light. He was using all the power he had to summon an even scarier blood dragon light now, in the hope of ending the fight. When he raised his lance, before he sent out the blood dragon light, he stopped in the air with his hands trembling. He could not move. Invisible knife silks were knotted around his arms, legs, and body. His arms were being restrained by the silks, prohibiting him from moving forward. Roar. Dragon Nine was angry, and the blood dragon protection glowed more brightly. He wanted to break the silks and strike with his lance. Blood was started to spew everywhere, but the silk was not broken. The strands dug through his armor, sawed through the scales, and cut deep into his flesh. He was bleeding from every part of his body now. Brother Nine. Dragon Fifteen and Dragon Nineteen screamed. They were utterly horrified. Hansen drew his knife back, and the silks tightened. He was strangling Dragon Nine, and amidst the pain, he forced him to drop his blood dragon lance. His grip on the dragon lance loosened, and it fell to the ground. The dragon light exploded, tearing out a crater which it then fell into. The knife silks Hansun had now were different than they had been. After he concentrated his teeth powers, he learned more about the honeycomb structure concentration. He concentrated the knife silks that were both strong and soft. Knife silks were not as sharp as Dragon Nine's Dragon Light, but their toughness was the same. Dragon Nine could not use Dragon Light to break the knife silks. Roar! Dragon Nine screamed again. Dragon Light began to erupt like a volcano. The knife silks broke in the Dragon Light, but they were quickly replaced by fresh strings. They kept him bound, prohibiting all movement. Catcha! Hansen moved the blood feather knife and tightened the silk some more. Dragon Nine's body looked as if it was tied up by an invisible wire. His form was twisted, and his neck and waist were constricted. His dragon scales broke, and he bled profusely. The claret spread across the ground. Countless dragons, Enigenics, and nobles were left speechless. They could not believe Dragon Nine was losing to his own greatest power. This was Dragon Nine. Dragon Nine was different from the average dragon. He was the pride of the dragon. He had potential. He had talent. He made the dragon proud. Now, Hansen was hanging Dragon Nine like a common thief. No matter how much he roared, his scales and flesh were getting peeled and cut. The dragon blood was flowing like a river now, and he was going to die soon. Enough. Dragon One waved his hand. An invisible power broke off all the knife silks and carried the injured Dragon Nine back to the carriage. Dragon Seven caught Dragon Nine and she quickly started to heal him. Hansen knew this was going to happen. Dragon One wouldn't sit idly by while Dragon Nine was killed. You were strong. Dragon One stepped out of the carriage, and he hovered in the air above the ground. He did not unleash any powers, but it still felt as if he was more supreme than everyone else. Hansen clutched his blood feather knife, but he looked up calmly. He did not think he would be let go after killing Dragon Thirteen and engaging in the fights he just had. So, you should die. Dragon One proclaimed. And then, a scary power burst out of him. Hansen felt like the whole sky was taken by a giant dragon, and that dragon was looking at him. If the creature opened its mouth, Hansen would disappear into its maw entirely. Dragon One, why are you bullying a young man? A clear voice came down from the sky. The feeling that he was being watched by a terrifying dragon suddenly vanished. Chapter 2065, Yushanshin. Hansen saw something descend from the sky. It was a man in green clothing. A fairly ordinary-looking sky. That man's approach wasn't ominous like the dragon was, 
and he rode down atop a swallow mount. The bird was a pretty black and white, but it was definitely a little too small. The Skyman occupied all of its back, and he had to stand precariously on it. The swallow looked tired. It flew before Hansen, allowing the green-clothed man to nod at him. Then, it landed. The swallow flew away in a rush, as if it was actually fleeing. The green-clothed man spoke to the escaping swallow, saying, Thank you for bringing me here. I will return the favor someday. When the swallow heard what he said, it started flying away even faster. It flew as fast and far as it could. Eventually, it disappeared from sight. Greetings. I am Yushanshin. For my sake, give Hansen a break. I will take whatever punishment you have reserved for him. I won't fight back, and I will accept whatever you deal out until you are satisfied. The green-clothed man stood in front of Hansen with a gleeful smile. Dragon One looked at the green-clothed man, and he said coldly, Yushanshin, is Sky Palace really going to accept the punishment on his behalf? Yushanshin nodded seriously. Hansen is Knife Queen's student. She requested that Sky Palace take care of him. I need to see him return safely. If we didn't do this, then... I am not sure how I would even begin to explain things. It will ruin the reputation of Sky Palace. You must understand my reasoning. The students of Knife Queen are that important? So important that they can freely kill as many of the dragon as they please. Dragon One coldly looked at Yushanshin. The dragon are a higher race. The dragon are important enough. How about this? A life for a life. I will pay on his behalf. If you want to kill me, then just come at me, Yushanshin said, lowering his head. Hansen was shocked by this, and he quickly said, I did this. This has nothing to do with Sky Palace. Yushanshin smiled at Hansen, and then he shook his head. When you entered Sky Palace, you were automatically made one of our ranks. Furthermore, the leader is the one that instructed you to go to the ancient god space. Whatever you do is a responsibility of ours. Hansen wished to say something, but Yushanshin stopped him. Fine. Yushanshin, if you want to shoulder his debt, then take my finger. If you survive, you may live. And then I will consider our debt settled. Dragon One looked at Yushanshin. Thank you, Mr. Dragon. I will be forever thankful. Yushanshin said gratefully. If you survive the touch of my finger, only then can you say thank you. After that, Dragon One pointed his finger at Yushanshin's forehead. That finger looked as if it could poke through the entire galaxy. Time and space collapsed around it, and everything vanished around that finger. Han Sen, who was standing behind Yushanshin, felt as if his body was going to be perforated. It felt as if Dragon One's finger could turn everything to dust. But Yushanshin remained unmoved. He did not raise his hand, and he let Dragon One point that finger at his forehead. Hansen was shocked. Is that guy really going to die for me? I can't accept a favor like this. The next second, Hansen saw the finger that could destroy the world get pointed at Yushanshin. No power came out from it, though. It looked as if Dragon One's finger only poked the man, and that was that. Thank you for letting me live. Yushanshin showed true appreciation as he bowed. Dragon One looked at Yushanshin without expression. It is no wonder you are the one who broke through Sky Palace. God layer you, who carried the blood coffin to outer sky. I promise you that the dragon's grudge with Han Sound has been erased. After that, Dragon One went back to his carriage. The tin beast resumed pulling it, and it eventually disappeared. Thank you for saving my life, Hansen said quickly. He owed this man a great deal. Yushanshin waved his hand and said, You represented Sky Palace in your trip to the ancient god space. What transpired there was not your fault. Sky Palace will not allow anything ill to befall you. You deserve the bailout, so there is no need to thank me. After that, Yushanshin waved his hand again and a black and white swallow flew down from the mountains. It did so upside down. It reached his hands and could not fly away. Since you brought me here, you might as well take me back, Yushanshin said, stepping atop the swallow. He stood on one foot, and the swallow took him away. Hey. I'm still here. Han Sen's eyes were open wide. He realized he was still surrounded by the dragon and that Yushanshin was now gone. Sorry, please excuse me. Han Sen gulped, then squeezed his way through the dragon's energeniacs and nobles. They looked at Han Sen with anger, as if they wanted to eat him, but now no one dared to touch him. Han Sen made his way through the scary energeniacs and nobles, and it was lucky that he had a strong will. Ordinary marquises would have felt their legs shaking as they walked past. You are powerful. You got Yushanshin to save you. 
After Hansen walked through, Shows appeared by his side. She sat down on a stone and spoke to him. Is Master Yu famous? Hansen asked. You are a member of Sky Palace. Do you not know God Lair Yu Shanshin? Shows looked at Hansen with surprise. God Lair? He looked like a nice chap. Why would he have such a title? Hansen asked. Shows looked at him strangely, and she said, God's Lair Yu is his true name. Yu Shanshin is actually what he named himself. There are many elites in this universe, but there is only one who is brave enough to dare storming Sky Palace. He is a member of Sky Palace? That makes no sense. You just said that he stormed it, Hansen said with a chuckle. Shows realized that Hansen really did not know anything about the man, and so she explained, Yu Shanshin's teacher was set up by his schoolmates and executed for the crime of treason. It was a pointless death. Yu Shanshin brought his teacher's coffin back to Sky Palace but someone stopped him. He was maddened by this, and so he stormed in. He beat the ten elders, and he got so far into Sky Palace that he was able to meet with the leader. He wanted to make things right. Anyone who was involved in his teacher's death was killed. He killed many in Sky Palace, all alone. Even the coffin itself was dyed red. After doing all that, God Lair Yu became quite famous. I'm not sure why he changed his name to Yu Shanshin, though. Chapter 2066 Teacher Luckily, you only killed Dragon 13. She was not one of the prestigious nine. Her death was inconsequential, so the grudge won't be all that deep. Now that Yu Shanshin has interceded on your behalf, the dragon shouldn't bother you anymore. Do you think you can remove the spell on me now? Shios had actually come up to Hansen to get the spell removed. We're still in territory belonging to the dragon. Let's wait until I'm out of it first. Hansen resumed walking. The dragon won't change their minds. Now that they've forgiven you and made a promise to you, Shanshin, they won't turn back on their word. Dragon territory is now the safest place for you. They wouldn't dare let you die here. It's hard to say what might happen after you leave. If something happens to you out there, whoever kills you might not even have any ties to the dragon. Shio's rolled her eyes. So, you're saying I should stay in the lands of the dragon? Hansen lifted his lips. There is no need. You, Shanshin helped you, and he represents Sky Palace. Before anyone thinks of attacking you, they'll have to weigh the consequences. And no one will want to incite the wrath of Sky Palace. Unless there's someone highly motivated by revenge, no individual will seek to kill you. At least not immediately, while things have yet to simmer down, Shios said. Hansen looked at Shios. Yu Shanshin killed so many Sky Palace students. Why was he allowed to remain there? Shios hesitated before speaking. That's complicated and it's not something the sky liked to talk about with outsiders. I know that his teacher was strong enough to be considered an elder. He was framed, and then he died. Then, his memory was tarnished with the crime of treason. But no one could have expected Yu Shanshin to react in such an insane way. They were going to kick him out of Sky Palace, but Yu Shanshin brought the coffin back and started killing people. Things eventually calmed down after he reached the leader. Anyone who was involved in the conspiracy, like the elders and students, were killed by Yushanshin. The reason Yushanshin was allowed to stay in Sky Palace has something to do with that. He couldn't obtain the seed of an elder. He owned an island in Sky Palace, but no one knows what his job is, Shio said, then looked at Han Sr., that is all I know. And it's all just hearsay. Outsiders aren't told much about what happens there. Hansen nodded. Yushanshin had come to save him, and whether it was an order from Sky Palace or something the man had done on his own whim, it did not matter. Hansen now owed him a big one. But a man like him would probably never need help. They walked to the spaceport, and when they reached it, he still hadn't removed the spell placed on Shios. When they arrived, all the ships refused to accept Hansen as a passenger. The guards even mocked him, telling Hansen to simply fly back to Sky Palace, and that there was no need for him to take their ships. Hansen was not mad, though. He looked at Shios. Shios, you have your own ship don't you? You can take me. Shios had no choice but to take him herself. They went back to Sky Palace. There was no danger along the way, and Shios successfully brought Hansen back to Sky Palace. Without an invitation from Sky Palace, this is as far as I can go. Can you remove the spell now? Shios patiently asked Hans Sr. Hansen smiled and said, you have a spell on me too. What's the rush? I'm not loafing around like you, with nothing better to do. I have business to conduct, Shows said shortly. After all that time and travel, her patience with Hansen was running on fumes. 
She just wanted to be free of the spell and get as far away from Hansen as she possibly could. Hansen touched the bite marks on his neck, the one she had left behind. The bite marks hadn't disappeared, so it was obviously not an ordinary power. I was thinking that we've been through a lot, and God only knows when our paths might cross again. Let's keep a souvenir to remind each other of our time together. The next time I see these marks, I will think of you. You should cherish the souvenir I have given you too. After that, Hansen flew back to Sky Palace. Hansen, you asterisk Shoal. Shows was mad, but Hansen was already in Sky Palace. She could not go inside without permission. Shows had no choice but to return to the Ghana. She wanted to run some tests and find out what Hansen had done to her body. If I can break the spell on me, I will make you die. Then, you can really see the power of a Ghana's kiss, Shows thought furiously. But Hansen was so scary. Shios did not dare trigger the Ghana's kiss, in case they both ended up hurting each other. Hansen's super god body could remove all spells, so he wasn't afraid of the Ghana's kiss. In fact, he wanted to take a look at how powerful it was. Back in Sky Palace, Hansen was welcomed back by the students. Everyone had heard that he had killed Sharon and Dragon 13 and of his adventure in Return Ruined Sea. To the demon and the dragon, this was a grand insult. But to Sky Palace, it was a thing to take pride in. Hansen handed over the silver beginning of Ancient God and the Xenogenic genes from the Ancient God space. He received permission to visit the Holy House and collect Xenogenic genes. Hansen did not plan on learning any new Geno arts. All he wanted to do was level up, and so he didn't go. Aside from those rewards, Hansen was granted the title of teacher. He could enjoy many benefits now. Some places that weren't open to students were now freely accessible to him. For example, Hansen had previously been forced to hunt in Shinyuan Cave. But with the title of teacher, he could go to Rare Beast Island. There were many Xenogeneics there, and it was a far better place than Shinyuan Cave. There were many more benefits, too, but teachers had responsibilities of their own. Every year, he would have to teach Geno Arts to students for 10 days. He could teach whatever he wanted, but nothing like under the sky. That was limited by level, and so he could not teach that. Not many outsiders could earn the title of teacher, but the people of Sky Palace had no problem with Hansen's promotion. They were actually excited to hear what he would tell them. After all, Hansen had killed Sharon, who was as strong as Lone Bamboo. The students were interested in his Geno arts, and the stories of Hansen's battles were so outstanding. All the students believed he deserved the title. Every year, teachers had to teach for 10 days. But some busy teachers had no time, and so they were allowed to stack up their teaching requirements for up to 10 years. Because of this, Hansen was not in a rush. Thousand Feather Crane and the Yoon sisters met up with Hans Senator. They went a practice in the White Jade Building. Hansen planned to check out the buildings behind it, hoping that the Jade heirs there would take his Jade skin up to Marquis' class. In combat, Jade skin was much more useful than the Blood Pulse Sutra. Chapter 2067 Jade Spirit Hansen went to the second White Jade Jing with Thousand Feather Crane and the others. When they passed the first floor, they saw many students guarding the Jade Wall. On the jade wall were paintings of a jade beast. A few of the sky students were standing guard before each of them. Thousand Feather Crane explained, When the white jade jing opens, those jade beast paintings will emerge as spirits. If you are able to suppress them, you can nab yourself a jade spirit orb. It is useful for gathering a spirit skill. Yun Su Hang smiled and said, The second white jade building has seven floors. The higher the floor, the more powerful the jade spirit. And also, the Jade Spirit Orbs give better results. Earl-class people usually hunt at either the fourth floor or below. Someone like you, as a Marquise, can definitely hunt Jade Spirits three floors higher. When I was in the Ancient God space and Return Ruined Sea, there were special circumstances that allowed me to fight Marquises. I don't usually have such power. Let's test my metal on the fourth floor first. Until Hansen figured out what a Jade Spirit was, he didn't want to play fast loose, and risky. The three of them reached the fourth floor. There weren't many students there. Unlike the prior three floors, which many people guarded, most of the paintings here were left unguarded. Yun Sui pointed at a jade spirit painting. There are many different jade spirits. Each one has different abilities, and they can level up differently. Like this jade tiger, for instance. If you get its jade spirit orb, you can strengthen your own vitality. 
This jade spirit bird is good for bolstering one's speed. You should pick a jade spirit that aligns with whichever self-improvement path you wish to focus on the most. It will be great for you when gathering spirits. I see. Hansen found the concept interesting, and he began examining the jade spirits. His eyes stopped on one depicting a flying fairy. He curiously asked, a fairy jade spirit? What type would it be? That jade spirit means balance. It does not excel in one department in particular, and instead improves a little bit for everything, Yinsui said. I see. In that case, I choose her. Hansen did not have a strong opinion, and he just thought the jade fairy looked beautiful. Hansen sat in front of the jade fairy's painting. That meant that was the spirit he had selected, in case other students decided to fight him for it. The white jade jing had yet to open. Thousand Feather Crane and the others each selected a jade spirit painting. Yun Suyi chose a painting that depicted some sort of spirit bird. It was next to Han Sr. Not long after, the white jade jing opened. A thick rush of jade air flowed out of the jade walls. Compared to the first white jade building's jade air, this was far more intense. Absorbing it would make things more complicated, so it wasn't all that suited for simple practice. Within the jade air, the jade spirits became active. They came down off the walls as half-transparent jade beings. Strangely, only the jade spirits that had students guarding them came out. The paintings without anyone protecting them did not budge at all. Hansen looked at the jade spirit in front of them, and he noted how elegant it looked. It boasted very light clothing. The half-transparent body really did look like a fairy that had come to earth. The jade fairy spirit started flying around for a while before it came for Hans Sr. Hansen cast his jade skin and sat where he was without moving. Killing jade spirits was a different process than killing xenogeneics. Jade spirits were an essence of the jade air itself, and its power formed them. You could break them, but you could not outright kill them. Killing jade spirits involved allowing them to possess you. When they were doing this, you would try to reclaim control with your own force of power and strength of will. If you were able to overtake and refine the spirit, it would become a jade spirit orb. The jade fairy spirit went straight into Hansen's body. Its presence was like that of a thick fog going into him. Hansen suddenly felt a chill run through him. A cold power flushed through each of his cells, as if to freeze him. Hansen quickly cast jade skin to refine the ice air that was inside him. Hansen only cast one cycle of jade skin. He felt his veins shiver and his muscles scream as this pure extract of happiness began to leak out of his cells. Then, the cold feelings were all gone. After that, Hansen's whole body shuddered. The jade fairy spirit came out of his body. It did not return to the painting. It became a half-transparent jade stone that was around the same size as a thumbnail. It floated directly in front of Hans Sr. Hansen picked up the stone, and he noted the presence of some fairy jade air around it. It must have been the jade spirit orb the jade fairy spirit had become. Hansen swallowed the jade spirit orb, and then he cast jade skin again. He felt a warmth in his stomach that then flowed up to the rest of his limbs. Hansen felt very comfortable. Every part of his body was warmed, like he was bathing in a lovely spring with all his pores free and open. His cells were very active, too. The power of the jade spirit orb was heartily absorbed by Hans Senator. He tried to create a god light and he noticed a new underlying power in jade skin. He couldn't quite tell what it was. The white jade jing was still opening, and Thousand Feather Crane and the Yun sisters were still fighting their own jade spirits. They sat where they were, almost as if they were frozen. Yun Sui had only been an earl for a short amount of time. Fighting a jade spirit on the fourth floor would be very difficult for her. Her face was all pale, as if she had been stuck in ice. Hansen used jade skin to cast a godlight at her. He wanted to help her suppress the force she was fighting. The jade skin god light went into Yun Sui's body. And after that, she looked a whole lot better. Not long after, a jade spirit bird came out of her. It then turned into a jade spirit orb. Yun Sui opened her eyes and picked up the jade spirit orb. She bowed to Han Sen and said, Thank you for your assistance in refining the jade spirit. You and I don't have to be so polite, Han Sen said casually. Those words meant nothing to him. It was just a way of saying that he was friendly. But Yun Sui blushed, lowered her head, and said nothing more. After a while, Thousand Feather Crane and Yun Su Hang successfully suppressed their own jade spirits. They claimed their jade spirit orbs, and after opening their eyes, 
They were surprised to see Han Sin and Yoon Sui engaged in conversation. They had expected Han Sin to be faster than them in suppressing the Jade Spirit, but Yoon Sui's speed was surprising. Yoon Sui told them that Han Sin had helped her. Thousand Feather Crane and Yoon Su Hang were shocked by this. Ordinarily, if an outsider meddles with another person's process of suppression, the Jade Spirit might break and not provide a Jade Spirit Orb. You can help others without the Jade Spirit breaking? That is weird. Chapter 2068, Refining the Jade Spirit of the Seventh Floor I think it was just a coincidence, Hansen said with a shrug. Thousand Feather Crane did not believe in coincidences, but these things happened around Hansen often. He was used to that. I think I'll go up and take a look at another floor. Hansen signaled to Thousand Feather Crane and the others, then headed for the fifth floor. On the fifth floor, there were only Marquis students. Jade Spirits worked for those of the Marquis class, as well. And many people of the Marquis class frequented this floor to kill Jade Spirits. There were a few Marquis students in front of every Jade Spirit. When the Jade Spirit emerged, no one would run forward. It all depended on who the Jade Spirit chose to go for. Stealing was forbidden in the White Jade Building. This was why Sky Palace had to control the number of people that could enter White Jade Jing. Resources were limited, and there were already too many students that needed what was available. Without pause, Hansen went straight to the sixth floor. There were many Sky there, and each picture had two or three Marquis students before it. On the seventh floor, there were significantly fewer people. There were only five or six Marquises in total. Hansen knew one of them, and that was Lone Bamboo who had leveled up to Marquis during the exam. Lone Bamboo saw Hansen and waved him over. He wanted to see him. Hansen hadn't expected Lone Bamboo to want to talk, so he walked up to him with surprise. Do you have time after you're done in the White Jade Jing? Lone Bamboo asked. I suppose. What do you need? Hansen looked at Lone Bamboo with confusion. Are you interested in going to Rainbow Cloud Peak to hunt a cloud beast? Lone Bamboo got down to brass tacks immediately. I am interested in hunting Xenogeneics, but if we're going together, the Xenogeneics won't stand a chance. Hansen laughed. Lone Bamboo smiled and said, A cloud beast has been in Rainbow Cloud Peak for millions of years. Up until now, no one has been able to capture it. I would like to tame it for a mount. You can come, if you're interested. Whoever claims it, owns it. No way. If that many Sky Palace elites have failed to capture it, how do you think we'll be able to? Hansen thought about you, Shanshin. He did not believe there was a Xenogeneic out there that man couldn't have handled. If there really was something beyond that man's strength, Hansen didn't think he stood a chance. The resources of Sky Palace have to be protected, and because of this, only Marquis teachers can enter Rainbow Cloud Peak. The rule is intended to prevent a duke or king from just entering and killing all the Xenogeneics there. In all these years, no one has been able to slay the Cloud Beast, Lone Bamboo said casually. That means the Cloud Beast has been in luck. If we both go, it's going to end up calling us Daddy. Hansen laughed. I don't know if it will call me Daddy, but I'm sure it will kneel. Lone Bamboo said seriously. All right. Hansen nodded. He asked Lone Bamboo for some more information concerning the Cloud Beast. And after hearing it all, he thought the cloud beast sounded similar to the cloud beast Hansen had seen in the sanctuary. Hansen had many little cloud beasts before, and he had always wanted the beast soul of a superclass little cloud beast. It was a shame he never managed to get one. I wonder if this cloud beast can drop me a beast soul? Even if it does, though, it's bound to look different than the beast souls I got in the sanctuaries, Hansen thought. Hansen looked around the seventh floor. Many of the paintings had no one in front of them. Hansen selected an image of a jade fairy and then sat down. Hansen waited until the jade air came out and the jade fairy spirit flew down from the wall. Just as it had on the fourth floor, it entered Hansen's body as if it was seeking to possess him. It was inside Hansen's body. Hansen felt a chill. This one was much stronger than the spirit on the fourth floor. If Hansen did not have his jade skin, he knew he wouldn't have been able to stand what he was now forced to endure. Hansen ran his jade skin like mad, and his cells felt as if they were undergoing individual explosions. When the cold air was suppressed by jade skin, the jade fairy spirit re-emerged from his body. It turned into a jade fairy spirit orb right in front of him. Hansen grabbed the orb but did not refine it. He walked to another jade fairy spirit painting, and when he was in front of it, another jade fairy spirit came out. It went into Hansen's body. 
Hansen refined another jade fairy spirit while the jade air was still active. All the while, the other students were still trying to refine their first. No one had done so yet. Jade skin is really helpful in the white jade jing. My jade skin is just earl class, and even so, I can refine these jade spirits so easily. If I level up to Marquis class, I can earn myself a whole plethora of them. Hansen felt cocky as he walked over to another jade spirit painting. Because there were no more jade fairy spirit paintings, however, Hansen had to select a white jade tiger to sit in front of. Roar. A tiger's roar rocked his soul, and it almost made him cough up blood. Hansen thought it would be easily refined like the jade fairy spirits, but he did not expect it to throw his blood into turmoil. Fortunately, Hansen had a strong will. He didn't freak out. He concentrated and put his blood back into his veins. Then, he used all the power he could to refine the white jade tiger. It was a spirit that was generated by jade air, and yet Hansen found it difficult to refine. It was not half as easy as the jade fairy spirits were. The white jade tiger kept roaring in front of him, and it made his head buzz. He almost expected his nose to start bleeding. When Hansen finally suppressed the white jade tiger, he opened his eyes and the jade air was gone. The students were gone, also. Only Lone Bamboo remained, waiting for him. The white jade tiger had become a jade tiger spirit orb. After Hansen put it away, he asked Lone Bamboo, What time is it? The white jade jing shut down five hours ago, Lone Bamboo answered. Hansen was shocked. It had taken him less than half an hour to suppress two jade fairy spirits, but he had spent seven hours to do a soul white jade tiger. But the white jade tiger's jade air was less than the jade fairy spirit. That meant the jade fairy spirit aligned with his jade skin a whole lot more. That was why they were so easily refined. The white jade tiger and jade skin did not go well together, and that was why it had been so difficult. Chapter 2069 Rainbow Cloud Peak They are both spirits guarded by jade air, and yet, there is so much difference between them. I need to get more jade fairy spirit orbs to level up my jade skin. Maybe the results will surprise me, Hansen thought to himself. Hansen still left with Lone Bamboo to travel to Rainbow Cloud Peak. On the way, Hansen tried to refine the jade tiger spirit orb. It was very difficult for him, and after using it, he felt as if he had been thrust into an ice cave. It took him a lot of effort to completely refine the orb. After swallowing the Jade Tiger Spirit Orb, the results were the same as they would have been if he had refined a Jade Fairy Spirit Orb, except that the Tiger Orb provided him with more energy. The Fairy Orbs made Han Sin's Jade Skin Godlike grow stronger, though. The Jade Tiger Spirit Orb didn't give him that feeling. Rainbow Cloud Peak was an island built out of clouds. The clouds themselves were solid, and the mountains and forest were all clouds, too. There were many creatures there that were made of clouds as well. Going there was like entering a marshmallow land. There are many cloud beasts here, it would seem. Which one were you talking about? Hansen saw many creatures made of clouds, and he noted how they all appeared to be fairly docile. Brother Lone Bamboo and Hansen, are you two here to hunt the cloud beasts too? Before Lone Bamboo answered Hansen, a student from Sky Palace came running toward them. Lone Bamboo didn't respond and Hansen could tell he didn't know who this person was. I haven't been here long, so I don't know many people. Who are you? Hansen asked on Lone Bamboo's behalf. The man wasn't of the sky. He had the head of a white tiger, and the armor he wore was made of fur. He looked like one of the Tago, but it wasn't the one he had encountered before. But if he had come to this peak, he must have been a Marquis teacher. Even if he wasn't one of the sky, he had to be a person of some renown. The man answered, my name is White Real. It's understandable that you don't know me, as I have been working at Sky Path Garden. I rarely ever leave. You are Brother White. When Hansen heard the man was working in the Sky Path Garden, he was taken aback. Sky Path Garden was incredibly restricted. Even most students of the sky were refused entry. And this man was an outsider, to top it all off. Hansen knew that Sky Path Garden offered the highest tier of technology research. Many Geno Arts were modified there, and that was where they developed treasures. The work was mostly done by the students of Sky Path Garden. White Reel looked very strong and lean, but he actually worked in a field that required mental fortitude. Hansen was reminded that you should never judge a book by its cover. White Reel looked at Han Sr., Brother Han. I admire you. 
Your modification of Under the Sky became an instant classic in Sky Path Garden. It was put in a textbook. Geniuses like you are wasted if they are not brought to someplace like Sky Path Garden. That is too much for me. And I was just lucky in my modifications. I don't think I could do it again. If I had to, Hansen responded. And he wasn't just being humble, either. If Under the Sky hadn't been a skill he was already good at, then he never could have done what he did so perfectly. No, no, no. You are smart. There is no need for you to be so humble. Actually, I have always had a question I have wanted to ask you, but we have never had the chance to meet before today. Today, in this encounter, God is giving me this chance. This is how I encourage myself, for I hope you can help me. After that, White Real bowed to Han Sr. Han Sin could see how sincere the man was being, and he knew that declining would leave him feeling guilty. You can ask me whatever you like, and we can discuss it. But I am truly quite average, and I fear I may not be able to help you, Hansen said. White Real was ecstatic to hear Hansen's acceptance, and he ultimately ignored what Hansen told him. He pulled out his phone and showed Hansen information on a Geno art. He then began excitedly explaining it in greater detail. The Geno art was complicated, and it was taking White Real a while to explain it. Hansen looked at Lone Bamboo. Lone Bamboo sat down and said, Time is no issue for me. So Hansen turned his attention back to White Reel and listened. He quickly grasped the problem that the researcher was having. White Reel was studying a geno art called Echo. It initially sounded useless. After Hansen learned the purpose behind the name Echo, however, he was surprised by what it did. Echo was not a geno art that used sonic powers for navigation, the way a bat might. It was a fighting geno art that used sonic powers to attack. The sonic powers continuously stacked up to deal blows of ever-increasing strength, increasing the duration and power of the attacks. The idea behind it sounded fine, but stacking sonic powers was difficult. After all, when you attacked an enemy, you wouldn't always be in an enclosed area like a warehouse. Geno arts like that required a catered environment, which made them difficult to use in real-world scenarios. White Reel had been mostly successful with it. In a particular environment that was fitting, he could increase the power output and the duration of the sonic power. He couldn't carry a warehouse around in his pocket to fight, though. If he needed to cage an opponent in a specific battleground before combat, the Geno art wouldn't be reliable. White Reel had researched this for a long time, and he couldn't find a way to make Echo effective at all times. Hansen thought for a while, and he found himself confused, too. Echo had a rock-solid flaw, and it was something that would be tricky to modify. Fish could only swim in water, and birds could only fly in the air. Echo required a special environment to be cast effectively, and changing things too much would result in Echo not being Echo anymore. Brother White, I do not think I will be able to help you. If you want Echo to be used in real combat, it will have to be used in a sealed environment. Unless you have a big bell to trap your foe, I don't think there is another way to make use of this. Hansen guiltily admitted to him. When White Reel heard this, his eyes brightened. Wait, what you said makes perfect sense. I will just need a big bell to cage the enemy. By doing that, the environmental problem will be of no concern. With a bell to cage Echo, the sonic powers will bounce around inside it. It'd keep on attacking. White Reel kept on talking, confusing Hans Senator, although Hansen had learned how to modify Geno Arts, his methods were very different than White Reel's. Is everyone of the White family modifying Geno arts? Hansen wondered. He thought back to his old teacher by Ishan, too. He felt bad. White Reel left in excitement. Hansen did not think using a bell was a good idea. Who would be dumb enough to let themselves get trapped inside a bell, after all? Someone who was that stupid would not need to be killed with Echo. Chapter 2070 Red Cloud Beast After White Reel departed, Hansen and Lone Bamboo continued walking up Rainbow Cloud Peak. This is the highest point of Rainbow Cloud Peak. That cloud beast is a rare sight. Lone Bamboo sat atop Rainbow Cloud Peak. Hansen sat next to Lone Bamboo on the plush cloud. He looked down the clouds below him. A white cloud beast that looked like a unicorn was running around in the clouds below them. There was also a phoenix-like rainbow cloud beast flying around in the air. Hansen could not tell which cloud beast Hansen wanted to nap. When you see it, you will know it, Lone Bamboo said. Can't you just go to its den? Hansen asked. This cloud beast doesn't have a home, as it wanders constantly. And it is too fast to run down. Even a duke might not be able to catch up to it. That is why we must wait. 
Lo and Bamboo settled himself comfortably and placed his jade sword upon his lap. That jade sword is important to you. Hansen was curious why Lone Bamboo still used a jade sword that had been built only for practice. He could have used any sword he wished, even a king-class one. Lone Bamboo did not answer, and he looked over the sea of clouds before them. Hansen let the subject drop, but when he thought the conversation was over, Lone Bamboo spoke. Do you believe there is a real god presiding over this world? It depends on how you define what a real god is. Some people take deified elites for gods, Hansen said. Not like that. I am talking about a god that can grant people wishes, Lone Bamboo said. Hansen was shocked. Gods like that, from what Hansen had come to learn, were nothing but bad news. From the god encountered by the seventh team to the sky god on planet Eclipse, they were some real arseholes. Did Lone Bamboo make a wish with a god? Hansen looked at Lone Bamboo for a while before speaking. He said, maybe. But I don't like that kind of god. Why? Lone Bamboo asked with a shift of his eyes. I once had friends who made a wish to a god like the ones you're talking about. Each of their stories ended poorly. Hansen answered the question simply, but he did not elaborate on the specifics. Lone Bamboo looked at Hansen for a while, and then he turned back to the clouds. Very quietly, he said, my sister made a wish to a god such as that. When Hansen heard this, he couldn't believe his ears. In shock, he said, what? Your sister made a wish to a god? Who is that god? And what happened? Lone Bamboo looked at the clouds and calmly answered, Something bad happened to me when I was young. Friends sold me out, and I was abandoned by my lover. I became a useless man. My sister prayed that I could pick myself up and be fine again. I don't know which god she prayed to, but I saw him take my sister. And then, I was punished by the nightmares. You saw him? What did he look like? Hansen immediately asked. I couldn't see the man's face. He grabbed my sister by her arm and pulled her into darkness. I tried to follow, but I failed. My sister was dragged into the black. She was so scared, and she kept yelling something, but I couldn't hear what she was saying. I could see that she was telling me to save her, but I was useless, and I could not do anything. All I could do was watch what happened. Lone Bamboo paused. When he spoke again, his voice was as slow and calm as ever. The man smiled at me, but I could not see his face. That smile has been scorched into my mind, and it has never warped or faded with the passage of time. I keep seeing it in my nightmares, and that is my only firm memory of him. If I ever find him, I'll recognize him through that smile he left me with. I will never forget this. Hansen's chest ached as Lone Bamboo finished the story. He now understood why the man had been able to endure the nightmares. Perhaps his heart had already been irreparably damaged, and so he couldn't get any worse. Lone Bamboo continued. Whether he is a real god or not, I have to find my sister. I will kill this god, even if it costs me my own life. If it is possible, I would like to kill that god with you. I'd like to kill a lot of gods, actually, Hansen replied. He had stumbled across a common interest with Lone Bamboo. Hansen wanted to find a god, but he did not know if it was the same god that Lone Bamboo was searching for. Lone Bamboo did not answer. He just looked out over the sea of clouds, seemingly unfazed. But suddenly, light began to shine over the edge of the clouds. It was bright and red, rising across the sky. A red cloud was approaching them. It was so fast that it looked almost like a jet. It left a contrail of red smoke in its wake. Now Hansen understood why Lone Bamboo said he'd know the creature when he saw it. That cloud beast was a unique shade of bright red. It was shaped like an ordinary cloud, but its color made it unforgettable. In a second, the cloud beast was next to the peak. When the other cloud beasts saw it, they backed off. The creature began to circle the peak, leaving streams of red clouds behind it. It saw Lone Bamboo and Hansen in its path, but it did not make an effort to avoid them. It wanted to play. Whoever claims it keeps it. Lone Bamboo gripped his jade sword and stood up. He teleported toward the creature and swung his blade at the red cloud that was nearing the peak. No matter how many times Hansen saw it, Lone Bamboo's strike was eye-catching. As simple as it was, it was profoundly beautiful. It was incredibly fast as well. Even with Hansen's speed, there was no guarantee he could avoid a swing such as that. But that red cloud released red light like a rocket. The red mist was discharged behind the cloud beast like a propellant, and suddenly, the creature disappeared from Hansen's vision. And Lone Bamboo's attack had missed. So fast. Hansen was shocked. The red cloud couldn't teleport. 
but it moved fast enough that it seemed like it could. Chapter 2071 Cocky Red Cloud Lone Bamboo chased the red cloud up into the air, slashing faster and faster with his blade. But the red cloud was way too quick, and it managed to avoid each and every one of Lone Bamboo's sword airs. I will help. Hansen drew his knife and swung it towards the red cloud. He summoned the wings on his ears, and his speed increased. The red cloud sped up even faster and evaded Hans Senator. He had suspected this would occur, though. He had managed to predict where the cloud would accelerate, so he adjusted his aim in front of the red cloud. It wouldn't matter how fast the red cloud was if an attack was moving through its flight path. But instead of continuing forward at the same speed, the red cloud immediately slowed down again. Hansen's attack went harmlessly past it. Tricky little thing. Hansen frowned, but he kept on swinging. Lone Bamboo and Hansen continued their assault on the red cloud without making contact. The red cloud could not escape, though as it was constantly forced to avoid the attacks of the two. Now, Hansen was calculating all of the Red Cloud's possible escape routes, and he kept waving his blood feather knife like mad. He created a net with his knife silks to ensnare the foe. But the Red Cloud did not stop moving, and its speed was teleportation-like. The knife silks were unable to even touch it. Seeing the Red Cloud accelerate yet again, Hansen finally realized something. This creature wasn't using a sudden burst of speed as it tried to escape, as a rabbit might. This creature always moved this fast. It suddenly made sense that the creature was never afraid. The red cloud was traveling around like a rocket, leaving behind a wake of red mist. It soon became apparent that the creature had used its contrails to write the word stupid. The asterisk him in, this guy is smart. It can use the common language. Hansen's eyes opened wide as he stared at the clouds. It's just a Marquise, but when the sky came here, it already lived on Rainbow Cloud Peak. After all these years, its intelligence and power must way exceed that of an ordinary cloud beast. But Marquise is the highest level one can achieve here. There are no resources to support a higher tier than that. If there were, it would be even more powerful, Lone Bamboo said. Don't worry. When I catch him, we'll take him for a walk and level him up quick, Hansen said, while looking at the Red Cloud. The red cloud soared through the air with great speed. The red mist contrail started to spell out another word, Bullsh asterisk T. And then, the red clouds formed an emoji that seemed to look down on them in disdain. And then, the clouds started to twist. They formed a red hand, producing one lifted finger at Hans Sr. D asterisk M in. This guy is a troll. Hansen summoned his dragon wings and took off after the red cloud. As the red cloud sped up and evaded his knife air, Hansen flapped his dragon wings and appeared above the creature. And then, Hansen struck downwards. As he did, he said, you be asterisk start. Try being cocky now. There was only a small distance to close, but Hansen's knife could not match the speed of the red cloud. His knife only needed to move the distance of a hair's thickness, but the knife air could not catch up. The creature sped away, widening the distance between them again. Hansen watched as the creature ran away and then the clouds twisted into a smug emoji. It looked as if the emoji was having a smoke. Hansen smiled evilly and used blood feather knife. Invisible knife silks were spun into a net, and they were sent flying over to the red cloud. The red cloud hit the knife silks, but the cloud itself was like tofu, and it was sheared away. Hansen controlled the knife silks well, though. He had no plan to kill it just yet. How cocky are you going to be now? Hansen shouted at the red cloud. Suddenly, the cloud accelerated again. It went towards the knife silks, but it was cut to pieces by the fine strands. Hansen frowned. He only wanted to teach the beast a lesson, not kill it. The red cloud didn't hesitate, though. It maintained course, still flying with blinding speed. The knife silks cut it to ribbons, but those ribbons gathered back into one cottony cloud. Then it presented Hans in the shape of a thumbs down. That stupid cloud is strong, Hansen thought. That's F asterisk King Creepy. It was incredibly fast, and its body could be shattered. Hansen wasn't sure how that thing could be caught. Lone Bamboo tried to snare it a few times, but he failed every time, too. They were the two fastest marquees there were, but they were unable to catch up with the Red Cloud. Even if Hansen used teleport to reach the Red Cloud and attack, the Red Cloud's speed and reaction times would still enable it to dodge the knife airs and shockwaves. The longer they tried to capture the Red Cloud, the more they respected it. 
Not even a duke could handle this creature. Even if he hit the cloud, there was no point. It had a body that was like water, and after parts of it were lopped off, it'd just recompose easily. Lone Bamboo spun his jade sword into something that resembled a tornado. The giant sword air vortex reached out to the red cloud, trying to suck the creature inside. The red cloud sped up and escaped the grasp of the sword vortex. Even that was ineffective. There was nothing Lone Bamboo could do against it, and he had lost against it just like Han Sr. It's no wonder it has survived this long, and it still hasn't been tamed by Sky Palace students. This thing is powerful, Lone Bamboo mused. It is, but it cannot attack, Hansen said. There was currently no hope in catching up to the Red Cloud, so Lone Bamboo abandoned the quest for the moment. He said, I will catch a normal Marquise Cloud Beast. What about you? It's fine. I have my legless crane. I don't want to swap it out. Hansen shook his head. Unless he found something like the Red Cloud, he could run faster than a normal Marquis Xenogeneic. Anyway, there was no point in getting another random mount. The legless crane was enough for him. Lone Bamboo caught a Marquis Cloud Bird. It didn't take much to catch it. Ordinary Marquis creatures were slower than Lone Bamboo, and he managed to nab it with ease. When Hansen and Lone Bamboo were just about to leave, the cocky Red Cloud followed them. It flew in front of them and spelled out more words with the vapor. Dumb asterisk SS. Dumb asterisk SS. Come and catch me. Hansen's eyebrows rose. That beast could use an exclamation mark. F asterisk CK. I have to take you. Otherwise, I am done calling myself Han Sr. Hansen felt angry, but he did not turn around. He knew he couldn't catch the red cloud right now. But he would find a way to get it eventually. Chapter 2072 the possibilities of the blood feather knife. After returning home, Hansen spent some time thinking about capturing the red cloud. It seemed likely that petrification or freezing abilities would be effective against the red cloud. But his own petrifying shockwave was no match for the red cloud's speed. Even if Hansen teleported right next to the beast, the red cloud could still react fast enough to avoid the shockwave. Its ability to accelerate seemed almost endless. But the petrifying shockwave is a power obtained from refining a mutant xenogenic gene. I need to follow its rigid terms of use to cast it. I can't use it with knife silks. If I could, it might be a lot more useful. Hansen was rapidly becoming obsessed with catching that cocky red cloud. Turtle did not work on it. Hansen had tried, but the turtle image just wouldn't stick to the clouds. When the clouds spread, the turtle spell would just come off. There were no better methods for applying it, either. If my jade skin had a freezing power, and I could put the jade skin godlight into the knife silks, I could possibly tie it up and make it into an ice cube. Jade skin's godlight possesses the element of ice, but it doesn't possess a powerful freezing ability. Hansen was starting to feel depressed. He still couldn't think of a way to catch the red cloud. He had no choice but to wait until he could think of a good way to catch it. The next day, Hansen picked up blood feather knife and went to visit the tenth elder. Hansen wasn't going there to meet with him explicitly, though, more than anything, he was there to see Yun Sui. He had absorbed all of the mutant blood and returned the blade to its normal state. It was now a bona fide half deified treasure. With some further refinements, there was every chance it could become a fully fledged deified weapon. Hansen wanted to swap the blood feather knife for his ghost teeth knife. He needed to talk about it with Yun Sui. But Hansen thought that if Yun Sui had the knife, it would be best if he spoke to her father. Yin Chang Kong, as well. If Yin Chang Kong could not refine the deified weapon, he might have to ask for the leader's help. When Hansen went to see the Yun family, Yin Sui and Yun Su Hang were both there. Thousand Feather Crane was out hunting Xenogeneix, and he had not yet returned. Sister Yin, thank you for lending me your blood feather knife. I've come to return it. There is, however, something I need to tell you first. Hansen presented the knife to Yun Sui. I absorbed the Xenogeneic blood. I am sorry I could not tell you about this any sooner. Yun Sui and Yun Su Hang were both shocked. The blood feather knife was famous because it was the blood that had always prohibited it from becoming deified. If Hansen really had removed the mark, then it had a chance of becoming deified again. Yun Sui accepted the knife and inspected it. The blood really was gone. The knife was as clean as a glossy feather. How did you do that? Yun Sui asked Hansen with visible shock. The feather had tried every method they could think of to remove the blood on the knife, but each attempt had ended in failure. 
If they knew removing the blood was possible, they'd have never given the knife away. Hansen seemed to only possess the powers of an earl or a marquise, so she had no clue how he might have done this. Mutant blood meshes well with my Gino art, so I was able to absorb it, Hansen explained. Brother Han, this is a great service. If the Feather knew about this, they'd be furious. Yun Su Hang, overhearing them talk, sighed. It was all down to luck, Hansen said with a grin. Yun Su Yi took the ghost teeth knife from her waist and returned it to Han Senator. Her fingers lingered on the blade, though, and it seemed like she'd miss it. I have not used it for long, so I can't believe I am already giving it back. But now you have the blood feather knife, which is greater than the ghost teeth knife, Hansen said, as he took ghost teeth knife back. The blood feather knife was strong, but Hansen was more comfortable with the ghost teeth knife. It complemented his abilities. It's different. Yun Suyi shook her head, but did not say anything more. She didn't sound happy about the prospect of the blood feather knife's potential. Just as Hansen expected, Yin Chang took the blood feather knife to the Sky Palace leader. The leader, in turn, passed it on to the folks at Sky Path Garden. He allowed them to work on it, in the hopes of making it deified again. This news spread all across Sky Palace. According to the research results, there was an 80% chance it could become deified again. Sky Palace was fervently excited. Even the nobles of Sky Palace seemed giddy. Millennia might pass without a new deified weapon turning up. But Angia and certain others in Sky Palace weren't as joyful. They did not look good. It's Hansen again, Angia growled. All the races guarded their deified weapons jealously. This one should have belonged to the Feather, but it now belonged to Sky Palace. The Feather in Holy Heaven heard what had happened, too. They all looked upset and it was difficult to determine if they were shocked or just mad. Hansen found the opportunity to return to the sanctuaries again. There, he hugged his cute wife and daughter. Dad, I want a hug too. Bauer approached, looking at Hans Sr. Hansen held one child in each arm. He felt happy. It would have been perfect if Little Flower was still around. The next morning, Hansen prepared to return to Sky Palace. But just as he was about to, Bauer jumped into his arms and said, Dad, I want to go with you. You still need to go to school. I will take you when you grow up, Hansen said. Huh. If you're not taking me, then I will find my own way there, Bauer said defiantly, much to Hansen's surprise. You have a way of getting there? Hansen asked. Bauer wasn't an ordinary child, so there was a chance she might have actually found a way there. I'm not telling you. Since you're not taking me, I will go there myself, Bauer said flatly. Bauer. It's not that I don't want to take you. It's because I cannot take you. Just wait a little while, until I'm back on Planet Eclipse. I will take you there then, okay? Hansen said quickly, trying to comfort her. He didn't want her to do anything rash. Hansen couldn't take her there yet. Sky Palace wouldn't allow the presence of a random outsider. If someone saw her, it'd be hard to explain. Fine, but you cannot lie to me. If this is a lie, I will still go there my own way. Bawa held out her finger for a pinky promise. I promise you. I will take you there when I return to Planet Eclipse, Hansen said seriously. He hooked her little pinky with his own, and then he touched her thumbs. Bauer believed Hansen, and so she jumped out of his arms. Hansen suddenly thought of something. Bauer, the items that you sucked inside the little gourd. Can they be released? Yeah. Bawa blinked. Chapter 2073, Absolute Container. Where are the items you sucked into it? Can I see them? Hansen asked Bauer happily. They were digested a long time ago, Bauer said, blinking again. Hansen was speechless, and so he asked, You just said you could release them. Bauer seemed a little indignant. I can, but I have to know that they need to be saved. Otherwise, they will be digested by the gourd. Bauer's little gourd might be able to catch that red cloud. But Bauer has been in the sanctuary all this time, and I have yet to see her evolve. She can't be any greater than a baron. There is no way she can absorb that Marquis' red cloud, Hansen thought. Bauer seemed to understand what Hansen was thinking. She clapped her hands and the shiny gourd appeared between them. She said to Hansen, Dad, what would you like to claim? My gourd is powerful and it can absorb anything. I will tell you another time. Hansen touched Bauer on the head, then teleported back to his Jade Island in Sky Palace. Hansen wanted to find a chance to bring Bauer there so he could try out her gourd powers. Bauer had eaten many of the xenogenic genes Hansen had given her, 
but she still wasn't getting pushed out by the sanctuary. Because of that, she couldn't be too strong. Hansen cooked a xenogeneic material in a pot. The xenogeneic gene was almost too big to fit in the pot, but he choked it all down anyway and heard the announcement. Marquis Gene Plus One The pot of meat must have weighed at least 100 kilograms. Although Hansen had the ability of consume, it still made him uncomfortable to eat all that at once. He gave up on eating for the evening. It looks like it's better to stick to smaller xenogeneic genes. As Hansen was speaking to himself, someone outside the island called his name. Hansen stepped out. He saw White Reel high above, riding a bird made of wood. When Hansen stepped outside, White Reel brought it down to land on the island. Brother Han, come with me quick. White Reel jumped off the bird and grabbed Hansen, pulling him to the creature. Brother White, what's going on? Hansen asked, with obvious confusion. As they mounted, White Reel said, Our leader is inviting you to Sky Path Garden. He wants you to help us refine the blood feather knife. He's asking me to help? I'm no good with that sort of thing. What am I supposed to do? Hansen was shocked. Surely the things he had learned couldn't compare to the combined minds that already worked in Sky Path Garden. If Bai Ishan was there, perhaps he could make worthwhile contributions to their research. Hansen knew some things, but not to that level. Plus, there was a big difference between the Geno Arts of the Sanctuary and the Geno Arts of the Geno Universe. They couldn't really be talked about as if they were the same thing. The Geno Arts Hansen had in the sanctuaries were edited, and they were different from their Geno Universe equivalents. He also had to refine xenogeneic treasures to make them work. Brother Han, don't be so humble. You were able to remove the xenogeneic blood from the knife. You are good at this. Let's go. The leader and the others are waiting for you. White Reel pushed Hans and atop the wooden bird, and then they took off towards Sky Path Garden. When they arrived, Hansen explained to them that he had only been able to remove the xenogeneic blood because his geno art was compatible with it. Hansen did not know how to refine a xenogeneic treasure or craft a deified treasure. The head researcher smiled and said, Don't worry, Hans Senator, we have invited you here so you can be a part of the refinement process. If we find some leftover blood while we are refining it, we will require your assistance. Otherwise, our work will be wasted. Hansen told them there was not a single drop of blood left, but the elders that worked with the leader were worried that there might still have been some. So they asked him to stay. Fortunately, Sky Path Garden did not ask anything more of him. Hansen just sat in the refinement room, listening to the commands issued by the head researcher. Hansen had nothing to do, so he practiced with his jade skin. He also watched the refinement process for the blood feather knife. He learned a lot. The blood feather knife was placed inside a crystal container. Hansen thought they'd use blacksmithing techniques and fire to change the blade. He was wrong. There wasn't even the slightest spark. The white feather knife was placed in a container. They cleansed the container, put the knife inside, and removed all the air within it. Then they lowered the temperature as far as they could. As the temperature dropped, the blood feather knife looked like it was being crystallized. In the end, the entire knife appeared to be entirely crystal, just like the container itself. One of Sky Path Garden's teachers used an instrument to check the blood feather knife and frowned. The temperature is not low enough. We cannot activate the power of the blood feather knife. Hansen, after four days of being there, had heard the same thing a thousand times. They tried to lower the knife's temperature, but they could never hit the depths they required. Hansen didn't know why they wanted to lower the temperature, but he saw a lot of secret cold element geno arts. They were really scary. Other materials would crumble easily at such temperatures, but the knife seemed just fine. That crystal container is impressive. It can endure such incredible cold without breaking, Hansen said quietly to himself. White Reel's ears were sharp, though. He heard Hansen's statement and said proudly, Brother Han, you are right. The container is good. This is the only deified item that belongs to Sky Path Garden. That thing is deified? Hansen was shocked to hear this. He knew it was very durable, but he never expected it to be deified. Its name is Absolute Container, and it has a whole lot of uses. Many of our high-tier treasures are refined inside it. Half of the King-class weapons in Sky Palace were made in there, White Reel said seriously. Hansen started to ask something else, but the head researcher spoke glumly. It looks like our power isn't enough to reduce the item's temperature to what the knife needs. Old Dong, please go to White Jade City and invite him to join us. 
Will he come? Old Dong looked depressed. Chapter 2074, Child Combine Liquid Take these vials of child combine liquid, and he will come, said the head researcher. Talking about the child combine liquid made his face twitch. It looked as if he had gotten a sudden toothache. Isn't it a waste to give him that? Old Dong and the other teachers were in shock. Do you know of any other ways to lower the blood feather knife's temperature to the level we need? Sky Path Garden's leader looked at everyone there, but they were all speechless. Go. Take the child combined liquid, like you would to give a dog a treat. The head researcher sighed. Old Dong did not say anything. He just clenched his teeth and left the research room. What is child combined liquid? Hansen asked White Reel. He was not interested in who the leader was inviting. It was obviously someone with a powerful ice element, and beyond that, Hansen didn't really care. But that child combined liquid sounded powerful, and it snagged Hansen's curiosity. White Reel quietly told Hansen, Child combined liquid is the formulation of one of our primary fields of research. It takes many high-level xenogenic ingredients to produce, and it requires a synthesizing process that is extremely complicated. It aids high-class xenogenics in evolving. If a king class kept on consuming the child combined liquid, there is a high chance he could become deified. It's that strong? Hansen was shocked. It was shocking that a king class could so simply be made deified. It would require a lot of luck, but it's theoretically possible. On the other hand, raising a duke to king class? That's easy. Our test record for accomplishing this is a mere 10 vials of child combine liquid, White Reel boasted. It's no wonder that Sky Palace is so strong. You can make kings like that? How many do you have? Hansen asked with shock. One. White Reel lifted one finger. Hansen froze, so White Reel continued. It is hard to find ingredients for child combine liquid, mind you. We have only made around 20 of them, and we use some for testing. And that king used 10 bottles. There are only 7 or 8 left. We have exhausted our supply of ingredients. Hansen thought to himself, if you can't mass produce something, what is the point of creating it? White Reel seemed to guess what Hansen was thinking. We can't make child combine liquid in large volumes. But with a few alterations, we can create a xenogenic liquid that works on normal xenogenics. If you drink a lot, a Marquis can become a Duke. An Earl could become a Marquis easily. Many of us are using it. Because the person had yet to arrive, the refinement process had stopped. They waited all morning for Old Dong to return, and when he did, he brought someone with him. It was Yushanshin. Mr. Yu. Hansen exclaimed, bowing quickly. Why are you here? Yu Shanshin was holding a dog. That dog did not look energized, though. Its tail drooped, and its fur was scraggly. Hansen had seen many dogs like that. It looked like any malnourished dog you might find wandering dirty streets. But there was no way an elite like Yu Shanshin would carry a being in such a poor state. Perhaps it was a high-class xenogenic that just looked like a dog. Perhaps the creature was king-class or half-deified. The leader has asked me to help refine the blood feather knife, Hansen said. I see. How much did the leader pay you? Yu Shanshin asked with a smile. That's what a student should do, Hansen answered quickly. The leader hadn't given him any money, and he had been dragged there by White Reel. Yu Shanshin patted Hansen on the shoulder and smiled. You and I are the same. We are good people. Before Hansen could say anything more, Yu Shanshin looked at the head researcher and said, Leader, are you going to pay me for my efforts here? Do not worry. I won't change what we agreed upon, the old man grunted. Then give it to me now. I don't work unless I see payment first. Yu Shanshin put out his hand. He seemed surprisingly stingy. Give it to him, the old researcher barked, grinding his teeth. He was talking to Old Dong again. Old Dong looked hurt. He opened up a box, and in it, there were seven containers. Each one held 200 milliliters of juice. Old Dong carefully picked up one and held it out to Yu Shanshin. But the man hastily grabbed another four before taking the one old dong had. Five of them. I have not taken any more nor any less, Yu Shanshin told old dong and the leader. Both of them were looking ill. Hansen looked at the child combined liquid in Yu Shanshin's hands. It was a transparent liquid, and it didn't look all that special. Old Wang, this is some good stuff, Yu Shanshin said to the dog. He opened one of the bottles and poured out the contents for the dog to consume. The dog immediately got up and started lapping up all the child combine liquid. It licked its lips, as if it was saying, My lips aren't moist enough. You should give me another. 
Yushanshin opened up another vial and poured it out for the dog called Old Wong. Old Wong lapped up the child combined liquid again. Can you stop wasting it? Old Dong burst out, unable to contain his anger. Leader, what is wrong with him? These vials are mine. What have I done wrong now? Yushanshin looked at the leader with confusion. The leader simply waved his hand at Old Dong, signaling him to stop talking. He then said to Yushanshin, You've been paid, and now you should work. No one will say anything after you are done working, even if you pour the stuff in the garbage. Yushanshin smiled. He opened two more vials, one in each hand. Then, he gave them both to Old Wong at once. Old Wong drank it all up. Yushanshin wasn't going to respect the leader just yet. He was going to use up all the child combine liquid first. It looks like Old Wong is full. This last one is pointless to have. Take it. Yushanshin threw the last vial of child combine liquid to Han Sr. Hansen caught it. He was surprised to see Yushanshin give away something so precious. Hansen wished to say something, but Yushanshin stretched his limbs and then said, Okay, time to work. He walked over to the absolute container and touched it. The other researchers all started to look nervous as they returned to work. When Yushanshin pressed his hand against the crystal container, it created a hole to allow his hand inside. The container then tightened again around his arm. The container was again sealed against contaminants. Yushanshin touched the blood feather knife, and there was a catch a catch a noise. It sounded like ice was being broken. Chapter 2075 Get Pregnant with Just a Rub? Chapter 2075 Get Pregnant with Just a Rub? Ice crystals kept spreading across the blood feather knife, and it looked as if everything within the vacuum container was going to freeze. The ice crystals grew, branching out like blood vessels. It was scary to watch. Yushanshin must be half deified. If he wasn't, there's no way he could freeze the vacuum. Hansen was surprised. Everyone watched as the ice power spread through the container, freezing even the empty space within it. In the end, it was all frozen. It looked like a perfect crystal ball. The absolute container was shining, and something seemed to be moving within the ice. Something was fighting against the cold powers. The researchers were fortunate that the absolute container was deified. Despite their strength, the cold powers weren't leaking out of the container. Yushanshin pulled his hand out of the container. He looked as ordinary as ever, and his hand showed no sign of the incredible cold that he had just released. My work is done here. Let's go, Old Wong, Yushanshin said, then pulled the dog Old Wong away. When he passed by Hansen, Yushanshin said quietly, Why are you still standing here? Don't interrupt their research. Hansen cocked his head, then followed Yushanshin to leave. The researchers inside Sky Path Garden got back to work. Some of them saw Hansen leave with Yushanshin, but no one thought to stop him. Mr. Yu, do you have a grudge with the head researcher? Hansen asked curiously. Call me Yushanshin. Yushanshin carried old one as they walked, and he went on to say, There is no grudge. I just don't like the way they do things. How do they do things? Hansen asked again. Do you know what child combined liquid is made of? Yushanshin looked at the vial in Han Sen's hand as he asked. No, I don't know. This is the first time I've heard of this item, actually, Hansen said. Child combined liquid uses thousands of unborn xenogenic babies as an ingredient. There are intelligent creatures in there, like you and me. Yushanshin looked at Han Sen and smiled. Hansen raised the child combined liquid to the light so he could take a look at it. He was surprised to hear this. And so he said, where do these ingredients come from? They come from the creatures that the members of Sky Path Garden capture. They do tests on them. What do you think? Yushanshin asked. He noticed Han Sin was not having much of a reaction which interested him. I am a sinner with hands stained in blood. I cannot judge them. Han Sin shook his head. Yushanshin laughed. He patted Han Sound on the shoulder and said, this is why I hate those people but they are the ones that make Sky Palace as strong as it is. I just don't like it. Still, it doesn't matter. I'm a useless nobody here, and that's just that. Yushanshin left after that, still carrying old Wong. He disappeared amongst the islands somewhere. Why did he tell me that? Hansen looked at the child combine liquid inside. He was not very noble himself, as he had killed so many. But after Yushanshin spoke about the ingredients inside the vial, he didn't think he could bring himself to drink it. Never mind, I'll just give it to the others. Hansen put away the child combined liquid and went to the general service area. Hansen researched the rules of Sky Palace. If he wanted to bring Bauer here, 
legally, he'd need to go to the general service. Hansen asked the people there how he might bring another person into Sky Palace, and it turned out to be an easier process than Hansen had expected. Hansen's rank of teacher was useful in many different ways in Sky Palace. With that title, he could invite his family to come and live with him. Without that title, no parent or spouse could ever visit him here. But annoyingly, if he said Bauer was his daughter, then they'd need to do a DNA test. Hansen didn't know exactly how the test would be conducted, but there was no way the results would tell them that Bauer was indeed his actual daughter. But according to the laws of Sky Palace, aside from parents and grandparents, only wives and kids were allowed to reside with a teacher. It looks like I still can't bring Bauer into Sky Palace. Hansen felt depressed. The only other way was for Hansen to make additional contributions to Sky Palace and gain the approval of at least half of the elders. Hansen could also ask for the leader's approval, but attempting that seemed unrealistic. His discoveries had made him curious about Bauer's DNA, though. He had bubble take on his appearance and go to sleep on Jade Island. Then, he went back to the Alliance and visited Bauer. He took one of her hairs and went for a DNA test, wanting to see if her genes looked like any creature in particular. The DNA tests in the Alliance were rather advanced, but Bauer herself had come out of a gourd. None knew what her genes were like. Hansen almost bought the entire planet and made the testing place a temporary home. He walked in front of the gene tester and put Bauer's hair inside so he could conduct the test. Not long after, the test results were released. The results were printed upon a sheet of paper, and what he saw made his eyes widen. The DNA test printout read, Father and Daughter. D asterisk M in, what a broken machine. And I just bought this thing. Who made this piece of SH asterisk T? Oh, I see. It is Starry Group. I'll complain to Ning you later. Hansen did not believe the results, so he did the same test on another DNA tester. The results almost made his eyes fall out. All the tests were the same, telling him that he and Bauer were father and daughter. This is impossible. Hansen swore he had never cheated with a gourd before. How could the results indicate that he and Bauer were genetically related? Hansen looked at the report carefully. Bauer's genes had a 99.99% .99 match with his. Aside from them actually being father and daughter, there was no other explanation. How is this possible? Hansen looked at Bauer who was looking innocent and unsure of what to say. You can get pregnant with just a rub? Hansen remembered that after he picked up the gourd, he used to fiddle with it while he thought. Aside from that, though, he couldn't think of any way they could have formed this connection. But now, Hansen had to admit that Bauer was his actual daughter. Hansen quickly destroyed all the test results. He took Bauer by the shoulders and smiled. Bauer, let's not tell mom that we came here for testing. 